Well, hello, everybody. Um, I'm here. I started a little bit late today. I was going to start at 9 o'clock, but I had some things to do this morning. That's why I didn't uh, actually advertise the time. Internet seems to be okay. Uh, hi, Mr. G. Hope you didn't have to wait too long. Um, how's everybody doing today? Uh, beautiful day here in the Philippines in Macong. Nice and sunny, about 83 degrees. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. I'll be going for a swim in the ocean here after I finish this live stream. So things are looking good. Um, as you know, the Philippines is opening up this week, which is uh, good, I guess. Everybody's going to be coming here. Getting a lot of uh, emails from people saying that they've already booked their tickets. They made a couple changes, though, since they made the announcement. One is that you have to have some type of health insurance. Sounds like the same thing that Thailand did. Um, they've got that requirement there, too. I don't really know much about it. Uh, I guess travel insurance would work. I'm not sure what it would cost. If you're going to ask me that, I really don't know. And whether you're coming here permanently, once you get here, can you just drop it? Or is somebody going to be monitoring whether you're keeping your insurance? Uh, most of the guys I know, um, they're uh, self-insuring. Like, that's what I do. My friend Paul does. I'm going to be getting Phil help now that I'm married. Jen and I are going to both get this on our list of things to do this month. But it only covers 25%. But the good thing about it is with Phil Health that you're if you have an accident or something, they you go to the hospital, they will they will take you in and admit you without get put up any cash up front, which is a good thing. Hey Joshua, nice to see you. I hope you got magic jack set up. You're gonna be coming out here soon. That's great. Um you know, things are things are looking good. Um someone told me there's a travel warning from America though in the Philippines saying that uh, it's not safe to come here because of all the new COVID cases, and I don't know what's going on in Manila, but I'm not seeing that here at all. I mean, it just seems to be the same. Basically, you know, going on three years now, it seems like uh, it's been the same the whole way as far as the number of cases. Uh, I actually ran into an emergency room doctor the other day. I was at a waterfall swimming with Jen and started chatting with the local doctor from the, from, uh, the emergency room of the hospital here. And I asked him about it. He said, yeah, they've got, you know, several cases, but not, you know, they're not overwhelmed with COVID cases. And it seems to be staying pretty steady, you know. So uh, I don't see why America is saying the Philippines isn't safe. They, keep, they say the same thing about, you know, crime here. They're saying that it's not safe to come here, which is just, it really isn't. Uh, Lost boy. Good morning, Mark. I'm flying out in April from Kansas City to Bacol. I'm uh Meeting a Filipina that I've been chatting for a year. Can't wait to get there. Good for you, Lost Boy. Hope it all works out for you. Uh, I don't use a VPN, um, but it's probably be a good thing to get. Uh, I think my friend Paul uses one. I think I know Ricky does. Ricky does um, a VPN. What's good about it is you can uh, you can watch like things on Netflix that aren't available here in the Philippines, and uh, it's good for banking things like that. They can't tell what country you're in. You can choose where you're from. So it's a good thing to get one. They're not there. It's not expensive. It's just not something I haven't gotten around to. I don't really do a whole lot of stuff online, to tell you the truth. I do my YouTube channel. I read the news on, 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 on uh, you know, Google and things like that. Um, we watch, you know, YouTube. Basically, it's all we ever watch on our TV. Um, and I do a little bit of research, but not much. And, you know, communicate with friends and family. That's about it. I'm not spending a whole lot of time online um, so i don't really feel like i need a, a vpn i do pay all my bills online so that's one thing you got to be careful about but i've got double security uh verification on my on my computer so so far no problems there um morning mark just booked my flight arriving in manila march 13th good for you good for you yeah i think by march um it'll be a lot of these requirements hopefully will be dropped like the travel insurance and the in the test the you the covid test Nuclear action. Mark, I was thinking of getting Pacific Cross just for hospitalization. Emergency doctor visits are so cheap already. No reason to get insurance for that. Yeah. Um, all I know about Pacific Cross is it's supposed to be like a really good uh, insurance uh, plan. Like it's kind of like the Blue Cross Blue Shield of the Philippines. And uh, that's great if you have something serious happen. But you're right about, you know, doctor's visits are so cheap here. I mean, I went to the eye doctor once. It cost me like less than twenty dollars for the full exam and prescription and everything. Um, so yeah, you know, I'd go to a regular doctor. I mean, Jen's been to the doctor before, less than twenty dollars. So it's so cheap. You know, why pay? You know, a hundred dollars a month 
for something that you don't really need. And most of got most guys here I know are self insuring. They've got a credit card or cash put aside. As you think about it, if you're paying say two hundred dollars a month, you know that's you know two thousand dollars a year. Um, you know you're not going to. You know it's a major thing in the hospital here. Like say I've had a friend of mine had a major accident, and his whole bill for being in intensive care and everything for like nine days was less than three thousand dollars. So. You know, it's up to you. You do what you want, but now you're required to have something. The main thing is they want you to be covered for um, for COVID. That's the big thing. Thank you for everything, especially the live stream. My pleasure. My my pleasure. Thank you so much for watching, uh, Mr. G. Good morning, Mark. Earlier, I was uh, the only one on the channel, and I was trying to say that if you come online, I'm still the only one here. <laughs> Just let's let you know that catch each other on the phone. All right, you're the first one. Good to see you. Um, good morning, Mark. Any uh, guess when they will? I know. Uh, I hope so, Jim. I mean, it's so so weird. Like, for example, you can go to a restaurant, okay? In order to get in, you got to have a mask on, okay? You put your mask on. You walk in the restaurant, like McDonald's, for example, and you can, you can take your mask off the whole time you're in there. So what is the point of having to have a mask to walk in the door, but once you get there, you can take it off? In the shopping malls, you still have to wear them in grocery stores. If your mask is down below your nose, sometimes the security guard will go up and say, you know, put your mask up. But I hate these masks. And I, you know, I used to think that they were worthwhile, but now I think like the M95s might work, but the rest of them, I think it's just a piece of paper over your face and they're uncomfortable. I don't like them. I wish they'd get rid of the whole thing. I, I just, I, I can't imagine having children wear them too. Like, you know, my oldest daughter's autistic. I can't imagine when she was a little girl having her wear a mask all day long. I just can't imagine how I'd even get her to do that. Um, so I just hate the mask. I hope it goes away soon. Uh, traveling hobo. I got my 9A visa in my pocket, and I'm ready to fly back to Davo to annoy my wife. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, Mr. Darcy, nice to see you. Hey, Mark, long time, no chat, but I watch you all the time. I'm off uh, to Mexico on Wednesday. Good for you. Uh, yeah, Mexico is a great choice for people to retire. I was down there for over a year. I lived in Cancun, love Mexico. Um, it's also so nice that you're a uh, close time zone to America for travel, for phone calls, business, things like that. Um, but I don't speak Spanish, and I have no hope of learning Spanish. I wish I could. I think if I spoke Spanish, I might have stayed in Mexico. I don't know, but I really liked it. Uh, Mexico can be a bit dodgy certain places. Uh, I found the police very corrupt down there. They used to pull me over. And say that down there, they only had certain uh, rental cars, like certain makes of rental cars. There was like five different cars to choose from. I had the cheapest one. It was just called a Chevy, little stick shift, you know, white Chevy compact car. And they knew that was a rental car. And so I got pulled over all the time by the police. They'd pull you over. They'd show you a radar detector saying that, you know, you were going way over the speed limit when you weren't. And they try and get you to give them a hundred dollars, or you give them a hundred dollars, they let you go, or you can give them your driver's license and supposedly get it back in court. That was a scam. Of course, nobody wants to give up their driver's license, so most tourists would give them the hundred bucks. And so what I did is I had a little business down there, so I just made fake driver's licenses, laminated them, made them literally with my printer and a lamination machine, and uh, they'd pull me over, and I just give them the fake driver's license, say bye, and drive away. And so I passed out like dozens of fake driver's licenses to these stupid cops. But yeah, that was my only problem down there. But I didn't have any trouble with crime. But you got to be careful in Mexico. I mean, it's, you know, you got to be careful. Um, nuclear extra. Mark, I'm planning to come to the Philippines in June. That would be two, one, two, uh, two and a half years uh, chatting with my longest relationship. Wow. Yeah, I talked to a lot of guys that, you know, they met a girl online and they're, they think they're in love and, um, they thought, you know, obviously they met them. They were going to be coming over here right away. And then COVID happened and these relationships have been going on for years. So, uh, just don't get your hopes up. You know, I mean, come here with an open mind because the way people are online, when you meet them in person, a lot of times you don't have the same, you know, it's just the, the magic doesn't seem to be there. I've had that happen to me and just, you know, have an open mind, come over here and enjoy the Philippines and, if for any reason it turns out that you two just don't, you know, have the same, have the connection you thought you would have in person, there's lots of girls over here, lots of them, and it's very easy to meet somebody here. That's the thing about the Philippines. Like when I came here, I had no intention of even dating. I was in a very bad spot. I just I was here to survive. 
literally to survive. And once I got settled in, I started doing my Cambly and I started making a little bit of money. And I had like, you know, I was, I was stable. I had some stability in my life. I had a nice little apartment. And everybody I met, friends and neighbors and stuff, hey, you know, you got a girlfriend, you have a girlfriend, you know, my, my cousin, my friend, my aunt, my sister, whatever. Everybody's trying to hook you up. Well, come on out with us. You know, I want you to meet my friend. You know, she's single. And I mean, it's just like, it seems like everybody's mission here when you first get here, if you're a single guy to hook you up. And so I started dating, but it really wasn't my plan to start dating. I had people trying to fix me up. And then uh, I went ahead and said, I said, this is fun. You know, I was meeting people, but wasn't the right girl. And so I went ahead and went on uh, Filipino Cupid for less than a month. And I met Jen and she'd only been on there for like a week. And then we, we hooked up through Facebook. We both dropped Filipina Cupid and uh, went on our first date, you know, two and a half years ago. And now we're happily married. So it can all work out for you. But um, if you're if you're coming here to, to meet a girl or to fall in love or whatever, you know, it's a great place to do it. Um, it's just have an open mind. And I, what I tell guys is if you're a good person, an honest person, um, a nice person, you'll meet a nice girl. But if you're you know, a sex pad or you're, you know, just looking to party and have a good time. That's the kind of girl you're going to end up with. You know, so that's my only advice on that subject. Um, oops, I don't want to miss any comments here. Hold on. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, just give me a second, guys. I want to, I don't want to skip anybody's comments here. Uh, a lot of comments. Wow. Um, okay. Mark, I've been coming uh, there in March myself. I have a concealed carry permit to carry my pistol. Is that allowed? No. If you're a foreigner, you're not even allowed to have a pocket knife, man. No weapons at all, period. You'll go to jail. Don't do it. Don't think about getting a gun. No. And you don't need it anyway. Uh, Roy Good, VPN is great, definitely worth getting. I can watch my favorite BBC television shows, for example. Yeah, that's the main reason people get the VPN so they can watch their favorite shows. Anybody watched um, Yellowstone with Kevin Costner? I got turned on to that last week or a couple weeks ago by my brother, and I downloaded all the set, all the uh, episodes that we, and Jen and I been watched. It was pretty good. I liked it. Um, congratulations. Crystal Cruise. Yeah, I know all about Crystal Cruises. I actually worked on several Crystal ships, did several contracts there. I supervised those ships when Park West had them. I sailed on those ships, worked on those ships, beautiful cruise ships. I even had a dinner every night the last time I was out there with the lady uh, who lives on that ship. She'd been living on the ship for eight years. I don't know what's happened to her. She was like 84 years old. Um, Crystal was a successful cruise line, a very successful cruise line. And the problem is Genting that owns them, which is, I think, a Hong Kong based company, but they own a shipyard in Germany that had lost all their contracts. And that was where the main trouble came with the, the owners of Crystal is uh, the, the uh, shipyard in Germany was losing money. And so they weren't paying the bills and they didn't pay the fuel bills for um, the Crystal ships like they were going around sailing around the world, obviously filling up you know, time time, and those bills never got paid. And so there, the ships were arrested, were seized by, I think, uh, it's in the Bahamas someplace. They seized the ships finally. But someone will buy those ships. Someone will buy Crystal Cruises, and, and it'll go back in business. I can't see them, you know, scrapping the ships. They're beautiful ships. Um, they have a loyal clientele that will only sail on Crystal. And so, you know, that's a little gold mine right there. I wish I had the money to buy Crystal. I would I would drive, I'd buy that cruise line in a second. That, it's a really, really good cruise line, a real opportunity for somebody to to snap up that, that, those cruise ships. Um, thanks, Gary Johnson. Greetings, Mark, from Indiana, Minnesota. I love your live streams. Thanks for everything. My pleasure. And uh, I hope you're staying warm. My brother lived in Minnesota. I know a cola can be there. And Mark, we're 22 degrees in New York. Wow, that's cold. <clears throat> I was in New York City on, I believe it was a NCL ship many years ago. And it was like the biggest snowstorm they had in like 100 years. We're actually there in the wintertime. And all of New York was shut down. We had piles of snow like three feet high on the deck of the ship by the pool. But it was so cool to go out in New York City and just kind of walk around. I used to live in Darren, Connecticut. And I uh, used to uh, 
take the train into New York City, but I love New York. It's just so expensive there. Uh, Tim McCullough, Mark, I'll be coming there in late March to see my sweetheart. Can I bring any kind of personal protection? I have a concealed carry permit. No, sorry, you cannot do that. I already said that. And you don't need it anyway. John Downey, how expensive is it to live in a nice neighborhood in Manila? What would be a monthly U.S. dollar budget for a good lifestyle? Nice kind of set. Well, I, I've never lived in Manila, John, but I mean, here in Dumaguete, you can see the place I live in is huge. Um, this is just one room. This is the, uh, I don't know what you would call it, the great room or whatever. I've got three bedrooms, a kitchen, another deck on the other side of the house there you can't see. Right on the beach, I'm the ocean's right behind me, forward here, where I'm looking is right on the beach. I can see the ocean. I'm looking at the ocean right now. Um, I'm paying $600 a month. My utilities run me about $20 to $30 a month. Uh, I have three internets here to choose from, all of them high-speed internet, free included. It's furnished. Um, it didn't come with, like, dishes and things like that, just basic furniture. Jen and I bought all of our own stuff for, you know, cleaning and things like that. Uh, sheets and towels, we provided all of that. Um, so I, I really think that if you have $2,000 a month, you can live really well in the Philippines. Not worry about it. You can travel from island to island. You can go out to dinner when you want to, and you'll be fine. For $2,000 a month, you would be in really, really good shape, in my opinion. We spend less than that per month. I think last month we spent about $1,600. Um, and, of course, every month I tell people something comes up. There's always going to be an emergency, you know, motorbikes break down, like my my Chinese motorcycle used to break down on a weekly basis. So I was constantly spending, you know, a few hundred pesos here and there getting it fixed. Um, you know, occasionally one of us got sick, had to go to the doctor, um, things like that. Or we, we decided to take a little trip someplace and spend some money or we needed something for the house. But, uh, you know, every month you're going to have unexpected expenses. So kind of factor that into your budget. That's really all I got to say. Um, just COVID theater of, uh, Barry Thornton, too. Um, my experience with N95 masks, they're also worthless. Well, I mean, I don't know, Barry. I mean, I, doctors have told me that they work. Real doctors have told me that they work. But it's not really whether they work or they don't work. It's like, you know, you can't have it on all day long. So, you know, when you finally take it off, if there's COVID in the air, you're going to get sick. Or if there's COVID on the table or COVID, you know, on the handrail or whatever, you're going to catch it. And this Omnicon is supposed to be so, you know, contagious. It doesn't matter what you do, you're going to get it. I talked to a surgeon the other day, um, emergency room, room doctor, right? And he was in the hospital with COVID, almost died from it, almost ended up on a ventilator. Very healthy guy, too. And, you know, he does everything right, scrubbing his hands, wearing a mask all day long, and still he got infected. So um, I just don't like wearing the mask. You know, I've been vaccinated. I've had my booster. Plus, I had COVID back in 2020. You know, if you didn't have, if it wasn't required here, I would, I would not wear a mask. I, I just don't like wearing them. I just would not. I'll take my chances. Uh, new subscriber, thank you so much. Uh, when you guys subscribe, I really appreciate it. You know, my goal this year is to get to 100,000 subscribers. You know, it doesn't make that much difference as far as, you know, the little bit of money I make on my YouTube channel. But it's just a cool thing to make 100,000. They send you a little plaque, YouTube does, and it has a little check mark on it and stuff. And that would be so cool. So thank you so much for uh, for uh, subscribing. I really appreciate it. Um, waiting for my 9A visa passport from Philippine Consulate, San Francisco. Well, good for you. You'll get it. <clears throat> I've got to do my 13A, my marriage visa. Um, we'll have to take a trip to Cebu to do it. But that's, that's what I'm going to do because I'm married now. So I'm going to take advantage of that. Um, yeah, Roy Gold, here in Thailand, they even wear them on TV game shows where the mouth is plastic see-through. Looks like a horror movie. Yeah, you know, I see, I see people down by the beach and in the boulevard, and they're, you know, they're taking pictures, and they're wearing their mask. Take, I mean, who's going to want to look at a picture years later if you're wearing a mask? You know, it's just, it's just ridiculous. I mean, I don't know. I just don't like them. Uh, MedTech. Your comments upon Crystal Cruise's ship seas for nonprofit payment of fuel. Yeah, I just went over that, Medtech. But yeah, Crystal will come back. Somebody's going to buy that cruise line. I don't know who it's going to be, but I wish I had the money to do it. I mean, that's a, that's a gold mine. That they were always full. They were always full on that ship. Um, and they have cool things. They have cool lectures on there. Um, interesting people. Great food. They're very you know intimate ships. Um, 
I like Crystal a lot. I really enjoyed working there. Um, my cabin was like, we came on the gangway. My cabin was the first cabin to the right there, right by the gangway, right in the main lobby there. I always had that cabin. Um, but it was a great life there. You know, I was getting paid to be on this beautiful ship. Everybody else was paying like $8,000, $9,000, $10,000 a week to be on there, sometimes more. And I was there for free, get paid for it. So I uh, love Crystal. But yeah, I, I think that, I don't know who's going to do it, some investment company. I don't know if any other cruise lines would buy it. Maybe, you know, Royal Caribbean, I could see them picking it up. Uh, Carnival might buy them. But, uh, but Carnival's gotten rid of a lot of ships lately. They bought, got rid of two ships a couple of weeks ago. One of them was the Fantasy. And I was on the Fantasy several contracts, too. And that was a great cruise, great ship, too. So, And then, of course, you had with uh, Genting Brothers going under. They also owned Star Cruises. And Star Cruises had, like, five ships. And they were kind of catering to the Asian market, mainly China. So all those ships are available now. So there's a, a bunch of ships sitting out there for sale. And people have asked about uh, my plan about buying a cruise ship. Again, people slam me, well, how can somebody like you that's on Social Security and YouTube, you know, teaching English afford to buy a cruise ship? It's like we're going with investors and we've got uh, an investment bank behind us. So we're going to be we're not going to be doing it, you know, um, with our own money, just like anything else would be financed. Hopefully we get owners of finance. We found a ship that we really like and it's available. The owners are talking about financing for us. They're actually a finance company. And so hopefully the next week or two, we'll be able to put, to put a deal together on this ship. And so we're excited about it. But with COVID, you know, it's hard to find people that want to invest in a cruise ship or in a cruise line when, you know, a lot of cruise ships are uh, canceling cruises and they're sailing. They're not full. Like a lot of these big ships um, that hold three or 4,000 they might so they're losing money out there, the big ship. So that's why we're going with a small ship. Our ship only holds 580 people and we're going to do world cruises and the world cruises are selling out sometimes within hours of being announced for like two years in the future. So we've got a good plan there. We're looking forward to it. Um, greetings from Holland. Wow. I've been to Holland. I've been to uh, Rembrandt's house in Amsterdam. Um, Hello, uniquely extra CIA guy, everyone. Uh, let's see, uniquely extra. Mark, I just hope when I go to to meet my longest relation that she will show up. She'll show up. Don't worry, she'll show up. Just, uh, you know, my advice to you, even though you guys have been talking for a couple of years online, treat it like you just met her, like it's a brand new relationship. Don't expect to go from zero to 60, you know, as soon as you meet her. Um, you know, treat it like, you know, court her. Filipinas like to be courted, you know, take her out to dinner, open the door for her, buy her flowers, you know, ask her questions about her life and stuff and, and get to know her all over again. Um, and I think things will go a lot smoother for you. But just, you know, take it slow. That's my opinion. Um, checking Long Beach, California. I bought my uh, Datsun 280Z in Long Beach, California back in the 1980s. And I used to live uh, very close by there in Orange County. I love California. It's too expensive for me now. Um, Al Burns, good morning, Mark. Uh, I'll be in the country finally on the 13th, one night in Manila and then to Davo on the 14th, Valentine's Day. Several days with Julie, talked over a year, well, a year. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I want to see how all these relationships work out. I've talked to so many guys that they met someone online. They've been talking for like a year, two years you know, chatting online and now finally they get to meet each other in person, you know, is it, has it helped the relationship, hurt the relationship? You know, um, it'll be interesting to see how it all works out for some of you guys. Because what's happened in the past before COVID is guys were coming here or they were meeting a girl online. Sometimes they met them online once they got here, sometimes they met them and came over here. And so it was all like really fast. Like they'd meet a girl and she'd move into their apartment like, you know, the next week. Um, and a lot of those relationships didn't work out because they moved too fast. So I think it's, uh, it might be good that you've gotten to know these people and they've gotten to know you a bit online and you've asked all the questions that need to be asked and you start a relationship, you know, in person together. Um, it might be good. It might be good for you guys. So I hope it all works out. Yeah, it's a big house. It's a pretty big house. <laughs> you know, Jen complains about having to clean it because it's hardwood floor. You got to clean. I'll tell you what happens too is the the beach out here, um, it's not black sand, but it's like volcanic sand, you know. 
And so fine, fine powder and the wind blows in from the ocean and you don't see it, but there's sometimes there's like a fine dust that gets on the floor here. And if I walk on barefoot, my feet will get black. So we have to clean this floor all the time. And it's, it's like the size of a roller skating rink. And, uh, and that's just part of the house. It's a big house. But um, anyway, it's where I like having a big house. I like having space. Like we got one bedroom we don't even use. And both bedrooms have, we have two bathrooms here. It's nice. Um, is a consulate open for business without an uh, online appointment? I don't know, Philip. I really don't know. Because the consulate isn't here. It's in Cebu or Manila. So I don't know that. Mark, did I hear correctly that you met Jen on Filipina Cuban? You did, yeah. Um, she had been on there for like a week. I'd been on there. I bought it. I had a paid subscription. I'd been on there for about a month, and I was going to cancel my subscription because it just hadn't worked out for me. The girls I met weren't, you know, serious, or they were gold diggers, or just they weren't what they said they were. And so um, I can't remember. I think I messaged Jen, or she messaged me. I think I just gave her like a like or something, you know. And she liked me back. And then, um, like, I was ready to give up the whole thing. And I said, oh, she's too young. And I'm just, you know, not that sure. She is, you know, obviously very pretty. And um, so I said, well, let's just see if she wants, if she has Facebook. You always have to do this. If you're check, meeting girls online, make sure they, they give you their Facebook. And they have pictures of their family and friends. If they have that, they're a real person. They're not a scammer. If they have a Facebook and it just has them in bikinis or some selfies and the chance are they're a scam or they'll say, oh, I'm sorry, my Facebook got hacked or stolen or something like that. Forget that girl. She's a scammer. But anyway, she had a Facebook and it was normal. And I said, we messaged, started messaging on Facebook. We both dropped Filipino Cupid and we started messaging. And I said, look, let's meet for coffee. And so she agreed to meet me for coffee downtown at uh, I think the Tom Tom's. And so uh, we met for coffee and she brought her, she brought her mother and she brought two friends and they didn't talk to me the whole time. And I found out later that she'd never been on a date her whole life. She never, her parents had never let her go on a date. She was 25 years old, never been on a date, never been kissed, nothing. And so she was very, very shy. I didn't want to talk. And it was a very awkward hour sitting there. But anyway, it all worked out, you know, and here we are married and now she's chatty all the time. And we have, you know, share English is excellent. So we have conversations about science and politics and the world and everything. So it's all worked out, but yeah. Yeah, we use Filipino Cupid. Um, uh, Robert Kennedy, I don't, or Robert Pratty, I don't criticize anyone for having longest relationship, but how about the million other women you haven't met? Yeah, that's true. Um, the thing is, um, you know, with the internet today, it is an easy way to connect with a whole lot of people. And the way to do it, if you're going to come here, you know, and you, your goal is to meet somebody, you know, I'd say like, three weeks, two weeks before you come, go on one of these websites, doesn't matter which one, and start, you know, contacting with women, but only contact girls that are going to be where you're going to be. There's no sense chatting with some girl in Manila if you're not going to go to Manila. There's no sense talking to someone in Dumaguete if you don't plan on coming here. Like, the wherever you're coming, like, that's what I did with Filipina Cuba is I narrowed it down. Like, if she wasn't in my area, I didn't even waste my time because I knew I wasn't going to spend the money. I, did, I couldn't, I didn't have the money, plus I didn't have the time because I was teaching on, online every day to go traveling around the Philippines to meet people. And so I, I kind of narrowed it down to people that were local. And so do that and then, you know, chat for a couple of days and then, then have a cup of coffee with them. Meet them at the mall uh, for a cup of coffee or Starbucks or wherever. And then find out right away, do you have a connection? Do you like each other? Are you attracted to each other? And then go on from there and, you know, process of elimination. But uh, that's what I would do. But, and, then, and then, of course, it's really easy to meet girls here in person. Like, when I came here, I flew into Cebu, um, and I was only there for one day before I flew from Cebu to Dumaguete. But I, I went to the mall the day after I got here. Like I got here from, I flew in from South Korea. I spent the night in South Korea. Then I flew into Cebu, spent the night there, and then the next day I was coming to Dumaguete. So I got up and went to the mall to buy a SIM card for my phone and just to you know get something to eat. And I had girls following me around the whole time I was there. Um, asking me if I was single. I literally had like five girls following me around at one point. Um, but it's not like that here in Dumaguete. It's like that in Cebu, but it's not like that here. The girls are much more reserved. But yeah, you can go anywhere and meet somebody. You can go to restaurants and you can go to the mall and 
down by the boulevard and just, you know, meet people normally. Like people will talk to you here. You can just chat with a girl. You see someone you're attracted to say hello and who knows what will happen. But um, yeah, anyway. Um, uh, I liked Open Ranger, the movie. I haven't seen that. Open or oh, Open Range. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I'm always looking for good movies to watch. Uh, I'm in Mexico City. I couldn't wait in Indiana anymore. Don't worry about the LDR. There are plenty of good women in there. Yeah, true. Yeah, Mexico City. Um, you're going to Mexico. Yeah, Mexico is great. You know, I hear Colombia is good too. Yeah, Filipino Cupid. Yeah, there's a couple of them there, but. I wouldn't, uh, don't do any of the pages. Don't pay anything. Get a, if it's not free, um, there's one called Date Asia, too, that, that was supposed to be pretty good. But, yeah, do the free ones, you know, and uh, you can search on which ones. There's a whole bunch of them out there. But I think usually with those, the girls can do it for free. The guys eventually have to pay if uh, you get so many emails or whatever messages. But whatever, yeah, do the free one. 50 degrees, wow, huh. Uh, Mary Gold, 30 and a wake up channel wants to go on cruise ships for, for his YouTube channel. You guys should get in touch. He's an American cool guy, has a good channel. Well, you know, there's a lot of guys doing that already. They're doing, uh, cruise ships. Uh, one's called something loca. There's several of them that do, that do cruise ships. The problem with doing a cruise ship channel. I wish I had a YouTube channel back when I was on ships. I could have done quite well because, you know, I could go anywhere on the whole ship and I could have done a really good YouTube channel, but I wasn't, didn't have a channel until I got to the Philippines. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you have to actually go on a cruise and pay to go on a cruise. It's expensive to do a channel on cruise, on cruise ships. So once uh, we get our cruise ship, we actually own it. I'll be doing live streams from the ship. I'll be interviewing guests that want to be interviewed and uh, crew members and, uh, doing a lot of stuff on the ship and uh, all the countries you go to. We're going to be doing world cruises around the world. So uh, it's going to have a whole other dimension to my channel, you know, once we do that. And my friend John Smulo, he has a channel as well. He's my partner. And so we're going to be doing some really high quality live streams and stuff. Like when the ship goes into dry dock, we'll be videoing all of that. So we have a lot of things to be doing with the, with the ship when the time comes. Uh, who knows the same cost of living in New York City? What? Come on. There's no way Manila can be as much as New York. I find that hard to believe. Someone comment on that. If you live in Manila, tell me if it's as much as New York. Because New York is crazy expensive. I mean, a shoebox apartment, you know, is like $1,500 a month in Manhattan. Turn the camera and show the... All right, I'll do that for you. All right, I'll do that for you. Want to see the ocean? I'll show you the ocean. Ah. There you go. See the ship out there? You can't see. That's my view I wake up to every morning. Ugh. Yeah, so that's my view. What do you think? Um, right. Hi, Mark. If you've ever come to Bahal, come by and visit. We're building our house on the beach. You might find my story interesting. Yeah, I'd love to meet you. I'd love to meet you. We could also do a, I can interview you on live stream too, if you want. You can't hear me. You should be able to hear me now. Yeah, I have. I saw that approach. I don't know much about it. Um, Jordan Peterson was talking about it, and I think with Joe Rogan. Yeah, I heard something about it, but I don't know. I know it has to do with the restrictions, I think, about COVID, right? Is it possible to rent a place clean, safe for 8,000 pesos? 8,000 pesos, that's about a little over $100. Yeah, you can find a studio here for that. You can find a studio for that. Um. Surrey, case figure to spend 250 per month to a DC. Yeah, you can. Uh, my first apartment was 250 a month in Dulce Vida, which is a very nice complex. I really like living there. Got a swimming pool, um, AC, um, furnished with everything, dishes, and all that stuff. And it was uh, around 250 a month. And they've got a couple apartments left. 
their apartments, most of them are two are two bedrooms, and those are twenty thousand pesos. But you can get a uh, studio if they've got any left for around two fifty. It's a really nice place to live. Really nice. Uh, oops, Reg. Yes, Mark, I agree. If you live in tropical, humid climate, they're very uncomfortable to wear in high humidity climate. Yeah, they're uncomfortable to wear anywhere. The mask, nuclear extra. I almost forgot to give you a thumbs up, everyone. Don't forget, thumbs up. Thank you so much, you Extra. I appreciate the thumbs up, and I appreciate you guys who have subscribed to my channel and the comments, too. I, I read all the comments. I really do. Like, if you, if you uh, comment on, on a video, sometimes I'll spend two hours a day just reading comments. I can't respond to all of them, but I do read them. Um, and uh, as long as you're polite, I leave the comment up there. Even if you criticize me, if it's as long as you're not getting personal, I leave them up there. Um, can I be a captain on your ship? <laughs> Actually, there's always the way it works with these ships, like they're for sale by maritime law. They have to have a certain crew on board at all times in case of emergency. So, like the ship we're looking at, it's got a captain, hotel director, chief engineer, electrician, plumber, um, cuffs up, cooking staff, you know. So, there's probably maybe 30 people working on that ship. So if we buy the ship, we'll probably keep the, um, you know, a lot of the senior officers because they know the ship. Um, so we already have a captain. I prefer, this is an older ship, so I prefer having a captain and chief engineer that know the ship. Uh, German scientist, Ramakan, Google twice a day, morning and evening, with Himalaya or a bamboo salt. Okay. Um, Let's see, um, Mark, uh, I was watching a different live stream and the person said that you should bring extra clothes if you're of a larger size. Can't you order stuff? Yeah, you can. Yeah, Gary, you're talking about Paul. Paul from Old Dog New Tricks. He was saying that. I said the same thing. I'm a big guy. I'm 6'4", you know, 210. Um, my shoe size is a 12. Uh, the biggest shoe size you're going to find in the Philippines in most stores is a 10. And extra large, even if it says extra, extra large, it's like a large in America. So I have a hard time finding a shirt that'll fit me, shorts, pants. Forget about finding long pants, no way. Yeah, you can order on Amazon and they'll send some things here. Some things they won't send. Um, depends on you know who the seller is. However, we do have shopping in Lasada. And I've been able to buy shoes on Lasada and shopping. And they were okay and they're the right size and everything. Um, but yeah, if you're coming here, Say you have a pair of boots that you like. I like to wear boots when I ride my motorcycle. So if you have a pair of boots you like, go buy another. If you're going to move here, not if you're just coming for vacation, but if you're going to move here, buy two. Buy two pairs and just keep a spare pair. If you got a, a pair of jeans you really like, you wear them every day, buy two pairs and bring the other pair and just save them until the other ones wear out. But, um, but yeah, you need to buy. Um, you're better off to bring the clothes. Plus the selection that you can have at home is nothing like here. That's the problem with shopping in the Philippines. There's no selection. Like, I bought a pair of shoes only for one reason. They fit me. That's the only reason. I didn't like them. I just needed a new pair of shoes, so I bought them, and I don't even like them. So, yeah, bring them. Bring the stuff you want. I'll bring your clothes from home. Um, uh, thank you, Mark, for your, that advice about courting my LDR. I'll do that. Yeah, yes, take your time. Go slow. Um, let's see. Mark, how much in general does it cost to live on a ship for a one-year cruise? that's really hard to say, Carlo, because every ship is different on the prices, you know, the cruise, like one cruise might be, you know, $500 and the, and the cruise next month, you know, going to a different place might be a thousand dollars. The lady that I told you lived on the ship, mama, we used to call her mama May. She lived there for eight years. Crystal, which is a very expensive cruise line. She was spending about a hundred thousand dollars a year. I've met women, usually women, that we're living on Cunard. Cunard gets a lot of people living on that ship from New York and London, and they'll live on a cruise ship. And they're spending, you know, $85,000 a year, something like that. Um, but they get upgrades and they get free stuff. And they're going to be all your food's paid for, your entertainment's paid for. You know, you've got all these people to meet, all kinds of activities. So for a senior citizen, you know, you think of what it would cost to live in London or New York, and you think what it would cost to live on the QE2, which is a magnificent ship. It's way cheaper. It's a great life, you know, so people do it, yeah. Um, good morning, Mark. XRP all the way up. That's, that's the only uh, crypto that I've got. I sold my 
my Bitcoin. I sold my Ethereum back when it was at the highest point. And uh, so now I've got all I've got left is XRP. And I'm going to hang on to it. I'm just going to hang on to it. Um, I don't need the money. It's, you know, I'm just going to hang on to it and see what happens. It's like my lottery ticket. Um, look, I met my mas massage girl is waiting for me. No, no LDR, LDR here. Okay. Good for you. Um, Gabriel, Mark, according to raw facts, you're not winning at life. Yeah, well, he's a liar. I mean, he, he gets all of his information from my videos. And says he says all these horrible things about me. It's like, is he got the information from my videos? Uh, and I talk about before on my channel. Um, my mother watches my channel. My brother, my daughters watch my channel. So why would I lie about anything when my whole family watches my channel? You know, really. Um, so yeah, he's just a liar. So I don't, I don't worry about it. Um, Yeah, that's true. She doesn't move any furniture, but she does. Like we 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 uh, we dust underneath the couches and stuff like that. Uh, the new condo is beautiful. Well done. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really happy here. I got lucky. Do you know if it's uh, possible to buy rapid antigen tests over the counter, or should I bring my own just to be on the safe side? Um, I've never seen them here, um, so I don't know the answer to that question. I've never had a, a, a COVID test. Um, but yeah, if it doesn't take up much space in your suitcase, bring one, you know, just bring a couple if you want to. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say. I don't really know. Uh, Gary Johnson, Jen is a great girl. You're both blessed to have met each other. Yeah, we sure are. I got lucky. I hit the, I hit the lottery when I met Jen. That's for sure. Hit the girlfriend lottery. Guys use Rose pharmacy online. It's cheap and they, uh, deliver anywhere in the Philippines. Missy drugs. Uh, made in India. Yeah, that's true. Rose Pharmacy. He's right about that. And also a mercury drug. Um, do I expect tourism to boom right away? I did, but then they um, then two things happened. One, all of a sudden they threw in the, the, the health insurance requirement, which can be expensive. I, I don't know exactly what it's going to cost, but I've heard it can be, you know, a hundred, two hundred dollars a month if you if you keep it once you get here. And the other thing is the airline flights. People are telling me they're paying a lot of money for flights, like $1,800 from America to here one way. Um, some guys are getting better deals, but that could uh, affect things too. Um, I think it'll be slow. I think a lot of guys are kind of uh, wait and see. Like they're going to give it a couple of months and see how things go, watch online what other guys' experiences are before they come here. So, um, but I think eventually it'll come back. The Philippines is doing a lot for infrastructure, too. They're spending billions of dollars on building roads and uh, rail systems and ports and all kinds of stuff. So um, I think the Philippines 10 years from now is going to be a very, very different country. It could be more like Thailand, more like Malaysia. And because uh, the, the possibilities here are incredible. I mean, you got 7,000 islands, beautiful beaches, friendly people. English is the second language. All the documents, all the... Um, government documents and signs and everything's all in English. So the possibilities here are really uh, incredible. And so I think that you'll see the Philippines become a whole different country uh, in a good way, you know, 10 years from now. So, yeah, I think it'll boom. Um, Michael, what up? Although I have a $2,500 monthly UK pension, I've decided retiring to Philippines full-time isn't for me. But I would consider spending half my time there and half at home in the UK. Is that, yeah, I know guys that do that. But the only problem is, is if you get into a relationship, Michael, I mean, she's not going to want to have you, you know, gone for six months and then there for six months. You know, that's not going to work. I know guys have tried that. Um, but I think what's going to happen, Michael, is you're going to come here and you're going to decide one way or the other. You're going to come here and say, I love it here. I want to retire here. And a lot of guys from England here, a lot from England, a lot from Australia, a lot from Germany, a lot from America. Um, you're going to come here and decide, I love it here. This is where I want to spend the rest of my life. Or you're going to say, this isn't for me. And you go back to England and you'll maybe go to, you know, Ukraine or go to Colombia or Mexico, some other place. But um, with $2,500 a month, I assume you're talking pounds. You know, that's a lot of money. 
wherever you go, you're going to be fine. You're going to have financially, you're going to be fine. Now in England, I know how expensive it is there because my daughters live in Surrey and they're, my daughters have both uh, British passports and American, they're dual citizenship. So I know how expensive it is to live in England. So it's a you know tiny fraction of that to live here. Um, let's see. Thank you for that information at Rose Farm. We shall remember that. Good. Um, um, Red Horse Adventures. Date in Asia. Met my wife there, but filter through the scammers. Yeah, yeah. You got to do that on everyone. You got to filter through the scammers because there's a lot of these girls out there, and they'll be they'll chat with you, and they'll be chatting with ten other guys, which isn't isn't wrong. You know, if you're just looking, there's no reason if she's talking to like five other guys and you're talking to five other girls. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. But then narrow it down when you're serious about each other. And even even then, if it's a, it's a long distance thing and you're chatting with some girl and you expect her to be loyal to you and only talk to you and you're back in America and she's here in the Philippines and you've made no firm plans of when you're actually coming there, it's really not fair to her. You know, you have to actually know you're, okay, I'm coming here next week and then maybe she'll let the other guys go and focus on you. But if you haven't made a commitment, you can't expect her to make one. So. That's my opinion on that. I've lived in New York and been to Manila, not even close in cost. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Um, no mosquitoes at all. Zero. I haven't been bit by a mosquito. God, in months. I don't remember last time I was bit by anywhere in the Philippines. I have, you know, when I first got here, they were talking about dengue fever. Oh, look out for dengue fever. And Jen's brother actually had dengue fever, but... Their house has no windscreens, no windows, no nothing, totally open. And they're also like in the jungle, basically. Um, but I've hiked here. I've been all over. I've been out at night. I've, I've no, hardly no mosquitoes at all. Like, they're not a problem. There were more mosquitoes in Kentucky when I lived there than here. A lot more. Way worse in Kentucky than here. So that's my, my thing on mosquitoes. No, I don't uh, go fishing, but I wish I could. Um, I see guys out here fishing in the ocean all the time. They're usually using nets. Um, and the rivers here don't have fish in them because it's like coming right off the mountain and then the ocean. Um, I'm a fly fisherman, so I wish I had a place to go fly fishing. I would love to do that. And there's uh, the other day we were out up in the mountains and beautiful river, crystal clear water, but there's no fish in it. Um, so, yeah, that's one thing I miss. I'm not, I'm not into deep sea fishing, though. I like, I like freshwater fishing in a river like I used to go to Scotland and fly fish there. When I lived in Utah, I used to fly fish there. Um, thank you, Gary. Sound is fine. That's good. I got upgraded to a one-bedroom suite on the Norwegian Jade in, uh, in the Haven. It had a butler and two lap. Wow, two balconies? Wow, I've been on the Jade. That's a nice ship. I was sailing out of New York on that ship. The commies are trying to cancel Joe Rogan. Yeah, I know all about that. I'm a, I'm a fan of Joe Rogan's. Um, all that stuff about, first of all, him having like Jordan Peterson on. I think Jordan Peterson's brilliant. And I agree with a lot of stuff he says. I think he's gotten a bad rap too. And Joe Rogan just has interesting guys on his channel, you know, and he, it's just having a conversation. It's a free country. And if he has someone who's controversial on there, like he had Alex Jones on, who's a, I think it's a nutcase, but he has them on there, and then he has someone else that's totally different opinion. And what really hurt him was this inward thing. And I have something to say about that. Uh, when I was in college, my roommate was black. I was one of the only white guys asked to join the black fraternity on University of Cincinnati. I think it was called Cap Alpha Psi. I didn't join, but I had friends. I was hung out with all those guys. And everybody says it's so terrible to use the N word. And I agree, I would never use it. But why is it that so many black celebrities and rappers and comedians, they use it every other word when they're on stage. They're using it all the time. If it's such a horrible word, then the black culture in America should take it out of their um, vocabulary. They shouldn't be using it out of their culture. They should, they should, they should criticize other black people that are using that word. Just because you're black should not give you the right to use that word. If it's such a horrible word, it shouldn't be used by anybody. And so Joe Rogan, who has a lot of black friends, you know, was using it in a conversation like, you know, black celebrities do, like uh, Mark Lawrence. And um, 
I can't remember some of the black guys, uh, the comedians uh, that he's friends with. Anyway, they put together a little um, video clip of him saying this word, and he got hammered for it, you know, and like Dwayne Johnson even said he doesn't want to be friends with him anymore. But I don't think it's fair. There's no way Joe Rogan is racist in any way, shape, or form. No way. Um, and so I just think it's, if you don't want that, that word is so bad, which it is, then everybody in America of every race, color, and creed should stop using it. But when you've got black celebrities using it in their act and rappers using it in their songs, and they're they're fine with it, they're saying, they're using it, my end my fan, my end friend, they use it all the time, and that's okay, but a white person says the word, even in context you know, of a story or something, oh, God, they just get slammed for it. They're racist. And so it's, it's hypocritical, in my opinion. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, what episode of Mr. Joe is the one broke at 71? I don't know. Um, uh, so wrong, Mark. A shoebox apartment is at least 2000 a month. Now it's gone crazy. I'm paying 1400 for a one-bedroom in a 55-plus community in Long Island suburbs. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I was not in New York, but I was living in Darien, Connecticut back in the 80s. And I was paying $500 a month in a rooming house, a rooming house. I didn't have my own bathroom, own kitchen. It was just a room. And it wasn't even a nice room. Um, and that was back in the 80s. So I can't imagine what it cost to be in New York City, like in Manhattan. I saw a video a couple of weeks ago, and they were showing these. I mean, it was like smaller than my closet. And it was like, you know, $1,500 a month, you know, just a tiny, tiny space. So, yeah, there's no way Manila and New York are comparable as far as prices. Um, I like, I like, um, I don't know what the, what the dimensions are here, but it's, you play basketball in here. I like, I like big houses. I like space. And I was in, I was in a nice place. It was small, you know, big rock. And I was paying uh, 20000 there. And it was it wasn't even a one bedroom. It had a bedroom, but it was like a room divider. It wasn't like the door on the bedroom. It was brand new, furnished, had pots and pans and all that stuff. Swimming pool, great view of the mountains. Um, landlord wasn't so nice. Um, and the, the big thing what happened to me there was they had a generator, and they told me when I moved in, me and my friend Paul, old dog, new tricks, we were neighbors. Oh, when um, the power goes out, ten minutes later. Generator comes on, you've got internet, you've got your fan. You can't use hot water, but you've got your internet, you've got your fan. I said, great. You know, that, that means I can continue working. And so I'm there for a couple of months, and we had a day where the power was out for the whole day, actually for a couple of days. And I go to the owner and say, hey, what about the generator? Said, oh, you think I'm stupid? He said, I'm not going to waste diesel fuel in the generator. So he lied to us, basically lied to us. I said, well, you know, hell with that. So I started looking around. <clears throat> I found this place on Facebook, and I think the only reason nobody had snapped it up is they've got three Rottweilers here, great big dogs. They come charging at the gate when somebody shows up. But once you get inside, they're puppies. They're just like they're not mean at all. They're like puppies. And so um, I took one look around and said, I'll take it. And it's, just, it's $600 a month. So for an extra $100, I'm going from basically what it was just a, a large studio apartment to a three-bedroom Two bathroom, furnished, free internet on the beach. So it was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer. This place is a deal, and I love it here. And the, when I was uh, my YouTube channel, like goes up and down my revenue, and it's been kind of low the last couple of months. And my my uh, landlord watches my channel, and he knows about. It. He said, "Well, where have we been all this? Well, I've been teaching teaching English. So what I do is I I tutor English online to make extra money. I'm making like five bucks an hour, you know." When you factor in the actually talking, you don't get paid when you're talking to people. It's supposed to be $10 an hour, but you have to be talking to somebody, teaching them during that time. Anyway, so I'm doing that to make some extra money. And he said, well, you know, I'll, I'll lower your rent. He offered to lower my rent, you know, so I would stay here. And I said, no, I'm fine. But, you know, that's it's just a great place. I got a great landlord. Um, it's private. It's a, I don't know how many acres it is here, probably five, 10 acres, all walled in. And it's all to ourselves. We got hammocks out there and i got a barbecue back here we can use a dirty kitchen we can have little parties out there beautiful backyard here on the beach we can use um it's just fantastic i love it here so anyway i don't know the dimensions though 
Uh, no, two hundred fifty a month on BGC or Makita, decent areas of Manila. Okay, you can get two fifty a month here. I'm not. I don't know about any place else. I just, I only live here. That's all I know about. Nice big home for Pontiac standards with polished uh, timber floors. Yeah, it's, it's good. Um, good morning, Maximus. Here from Davo. Your video not clear today. I wonder why. I want you on a large 4K TV. I don't know. It's, you know, I'm doing it on my phone. And um, when you're doing the live stream, that's the only thing about the live streams. That the quality is not the same. Like if I made this video and just recorded it with my phone and then posted it online, it's crystal clear, great picture. But whenever you do a live stream, they downgrade the quality of the video. That's the only thing. That's why I don't like doing interviews on live stream because the quality is not the same. So I uh, apologize for that. This is the best it can be. Um, let's see. Um, 48 pesos today. Thanks for the heads up on uh, Madeira PT headed to the old grave this spring. We'll definitely try to make it over. Is there a cruise from Portugal mainland to Madeira? I don't know, but I know uh, the ship I'm looking at actually has flagged them in Madeira. So it's uh, a Portuguese, you know, flagged in Portugal, but, you know, Madeira is the home port. Uh, Madeira is a beautiful place. I love it there. And Portugal is a great place, too. So, yeah, there's lots of cruises going to Portugal, and there's a lot of cruises that go out of Portugal, usually out of Lisbon. I've sailed out of Lisbon many times myself. Ally and Moloch, you can get uh, 12 W at one. You can get 12 at uh, one of the shoe stores. Can't remember which one. I bought them there. Oh, that's good to know, but that's in, that's in Cebu. We don't have those here. We got Robinsons. They have no selection. Love the floor, more space and shine, yeah. Gary Johnson, FYI, I thought the, the background was wallpaper. I didn't know it was actually your house. Yeah, that's my house. It's not a blue screen. That's my house back there. <laughs> yeah. I usually shoot outside, if you remember my live streams, but sometimes it's noisy out there. And I did a video here uh, last week where I filmed it here, and it turned out really good. So I said, well, I'll just use it here. Plus, I got my table. It's comfortable, and I got the fan here and the breeze, and so um private so i decided to try doing them here um uh, yeah sabu that's right yeah but the thing is i know about the the okay okay stores and i bought a couple of shorts there you're buying you're buying dead guys clothes basically you know some guy dies his girlfriend or wife takes his clothes and sells them or their clothes from uh, goodwill back in america and I've had mixed results there. I haven't really found a whole lot of stuff there that I want to buy. Uh, BJ Johnson. Mark, do you still recommend retiring in the Philippines? I've seen some of the videos where you talk about moving to another country. Yeah, well, BJ, it's not – when I said that, first of all, that video was poor timing on my part. It was right after the typhoon. Everybody was slamming me for, oh, you can't take a little wind, whatever, but – I, I was just getting bored with the Philippines because of COVID. You can't do anything. I couldn't go to any other. I couldn't even go to the other side of this island. They had roadblocks set up. And it's that way for like almost two years. And I'm a man of the world. I've traveled the world my entire life. I've been to over 100 countries. And so um, I was bored. I want to show Jen the world. She's never been any place but this. She hasn't been farther than 30 miles from her house. And so I wanted to show her the world. Um, but the, the Philippines is fantastic. I, I've been around the world. I can't think of any place. If you're a guy my age and you want to retire, you're on a fixed income, or you want to meet somebody, I can't think of any place better than the Philippines. That's my opinion. And a lot of guys from around the world are living here and love it from many different countries. Um, so I have nothing negative to say about the Philippines. Yeah, it's a developing country. You can't always find the things you want to find. Sometimes the power goes out. Um, et cetera, et cetera. And of course you got COVID now, but um, yeah, the Philippines is great, but just because someday I might move to Armenia or I might go to another country, it uh, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the Philippines. It just means I want to change. You know, I just want change. I like culture. I want to see other places. I love ancient history. So, you know, someday in the future, I hope to travel with my wife and just see the world again. And if we get the cruise ship, it's going to be great. We'll be living on the ship, basically sailing around the world nonstop. So, We'll see. But yeah, the Philippines is great. I highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, I think there's a guy named Andy Omar is running it. 
and uh, he's making a living off, you know, saying bad things about me and my friends, and it's all lies, but, you know, whatever. Um, anyone that participates in channels like Raw Facts is, is part of the problem. Once I identified the BS on there, I blocked the channel. That guy needs a speech therapist and a trip on the word jet. Yeah. I, you know, I'm having, there's several channels, like there's channels out there where they, I don't know how YouTube lets them go, but they, they've cloned my channel. Like they call their channel, Every Man Has a Story. I don't know how they can have two channels with the same name. They have my picture and then they have videos that's basically criticizing me and other, and other friends of mine. And, uh, Sometimes they have my videos on their channel, and it's that's copyright. Like if I if I do a, a video of someone at a restaurant, and they're playing music in the background. I can get a copyright strike because that music. But someone can take my video and put it on their channel, and and take credit for it. And then they put like um, um, subtitles over the over the screen saying bad things about me or a voiceover, you know, making fun of me. And that's perfectly fine. They get away with it. I don't know how they get away with it, and there's nothing I can do about it. So that's just life of having a YouTube channel. I don't know. But everybody, every every vlogger I know here, and I know a lot of them, men and women, they all have trolls. Every one of them, they get attacked by people. And the girls especially, like, when they go after these young girls, these Filipinas, are just trying to make a living on a little YouTube channel. Make it, They might make $20 a month on their little YouTube channel. And there's guys saying things. They make these girls cry. They cry because of the horrible things that some troll says to them. So, I mean, you know, it just doesn't say much about you as a man. If you want to go attack some young girl, you don't even know. And, you know, just to get your laugh. So, anyway, enough about that. Uh, also, I also connected with my Filipina partner on Filipina Cupid. She was working in Saudi Arabia. For uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of these girls do these. They're overseas workers, and they'll work in Saudi Arabia or wherever. And it's always a two-year contract, which is a long time. And they're working six days a week. They don't pay them anywhere near they would a Saudi. Like, I talked to a nurse one time. It was a male. And his, he was working side-by-side -side with Saudi nurses doing the exact same job. The Saudi work, nurses were working, like, eight hours a day. He was working 10. They were working five days a week. He was working six. Um, they got holidays off. He didn't. And they were getting paid, like, twice as much money. So it's really not fair. Um, let's see. Um, hi, Mark. Gary Lafferty. Do you suspect travel insurance if you live in in the Philippines year-round on a tourist visa will be required like traveler today? I don't think so, Gary. I think it's going to be you have to show proof of it to get into the country, just like the throwaway ticket, you know, the onward bound ticket you have to show at the airport, wherever you're flying from to get on the plane. I think it's, just, it's going to be like that, your your vaccine card. Once you show your your proof of vaccination, your proof of insurance, and you're in the country, especially if you're going to live here, nobody's going to ask to see the um, your proof of insurance again. I don't think I can imagine that, unless you get to go to the hospital, obviously. So um, I don't know what will happen there, but I think that won't be a problem. Okay, let's see. How was your experience teaching English in the Philippines? I think uh, I mentioned before. Yeah, well, I still do. I, I'm, I'll probably be doing it again today. Um, it's great. I love it. I work for Cambly, and uh, it's $10 an hour while you're talking to someone. So you're making $10 an hour. Nothing deducted, no taxes, no nothing. Um, but usually, like, say you have what's called priority hours. So I'll be on an hour. I guarantee I'll be on, say, from nine to 10, okay? And so during that time period, it, whenever I'm talking to a student, I get him paid. Um, but it's great. I mean, I have interesting conversations. Yesterday, I talked to people from Japan, from China, from Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt. They just have nice conversations. It's not really tutoring. It's just they, they want to have a conversation with someone who's a native English speaker. That's all it is. So it's really fun. I love it. And they pay you by PayPal every week. Trolls come with fame. The more famous, the more trolls. The rest of us appreciate you greatly. I love your story to come back from broke and sad to winning happy and getting married to an awesome girl. Thank you so much, Daryl. Very nice of you to say that. Um, 
The Philippines has ordered all mosquitoes to wear a mask to fly the curve with dengue. <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see. Uh, Maybe try not to. Well, that's what I try and do. I don't acknowledge them, but sometimes they slip through. You know what they did is um, I think that some of these trolls, they know me from back when I worked on cruise ships because they have a fake name. And one of the fake names was uh, Jack Sweetman. Jack Sweetman used to be my boss at Park West Gallery years ago. And uh, they had known called David Tiemann. He used to be a friend of mine who was an auctioneer on a cruise ship. And so that would be someone who knows has known me for like 20 years and is using those names. So I see the names. Oh, that's Jack. Or that's, that's the uh, guy I know. And I click on. Messy, so. Um, I don't even know about who knows, but they're using names or last names from former friends of mine. So I don't know what's going on there, but I don't really care. Okay. Coach and truckers. I'm landing uh, in Clark March 2nd. No plans to leave. Good for you. Good for you. Spot wrong about Rogan and that word. Yeah, well, good. I'm glad you agree with that. I have a lot of respect for him. I think he's, he's accomplished a lot in his life. Uh, neither. I'm from, I'm not from, I lived in uh, Crestwood, Kentucky. I had a, um, a home there for 15 years, which is very near Louisville. And my mother and brother live in Prospect, Kentucky. But I, I don't say I'm from there because I just had a home there. And I, I bought the house there back when, um, <clears throat> I don't know, when I was, uh, after I had my, my heart trouble and stuff, I bought the house. There. So I, my, my daughters went back to England. I wanted them to have a place to visit. My family was there. So they promised to look after the house for me while I was uh, on ships. And so I sold all of my uh, Apple stock and bought this house. If I kept the Apple stock, I'd have about $15 million today. And I ended up losing the house and in bankruptcy. Uh, I recommend getting your hepatitis uh, and B shot if you're going to eat uh, street food and typhoid. I got them uh, all in a pneumonia shot, too. I agree with you on that. That's really a good idea. I had all those on the ship anyway. I had to get them. I've had, you know, the typhoid shot. I've had pneumonia. There's a lot of people that got flu and died from it back in 1918. They didn't die of the flu. They died of pneumonia. Also, a, a good one to get is um, shingles, because if you had chickenpox as a child, you're very susceptible to getting, to getting shingles when you're older. I know people who've gotten shingles. My mother got it. Um, a friend of hers got it. A friend of mine here got it. And it's horrible. It's really, really painful. And so get the shingles shot if you're a guy my age and you had chickenpox as a child. Or you're not sure, but yeah, get it for you. Um, Yeah, I was kind of disappointed in him that he that he kind of turned on Joe like that, you know. I mean, we've all said things in our past and done things in our past that we're not proud of. I mean, imagine if you had every single word, everything thing you've ever said your whole life, and it's put out there on the Internet, which is what happens to celebrities. You know, it's really not fair. I mean, you know, some things are just private. Like Joe Rogan said, like they're, they're smoking pot, drinking, and he says the N-word or, he said one thing, like they walked into a bar and they were the only white people there. And he said, yeah, it was like walking like Planet of the Apes. So that sounds very, very racist. But it was just an analogy. Like you're walking in and you feel really out of place and everybody's looking at you, you felt uncomfortable, which is probably how a black person feels when they walk into a white bar. But he didn't mean it in a racist way, but it comes off that way. And so, you know, you should cut him some slack because if you, if you watch his context of his whole show, and all the black people he's had on the show, like many, many, many of them, he's respectful and friendly. He's got black friends like Daniel Cormier and, you know, these other, these other people. And so, anyway, he's not a racist. And I, I agree with you. Uh, when black people use the N-word, it can be a sign of solidarity, saying this is what the rest of society think of us. You cannot use it if you're not black. So you're obviously a black person, Roger, but I just disagree with that. It's a... It's an ugly word. There's many other words you can use. So you should, you should help exterminate this word. If you're a black man, you should help exterminate this word. If it's such an ugly word, you should exterminate it. But when white friends have, you know, nowadays a lot of black people, white people, have, they have friends. They marry each other. 
And so if you're in a culture and they're saying it, and you're growing, especially if you're a teenager growing up, and you're having your black friends are saying the N-word all the time, you think you can say it too. You like if you're and so um, I think it should be exterminated. And I think that you as a black man have a responsibility to get rid of that word. Use something else. Be creative. Um, yeah, I know. He hates me already. I know that. Don't know why. I don't even know the guy. Okay. Um, your apartment in Hawaii would be 5000 a month and much more in Manhattan. Oh, yeah. At least that. At least that. I know that. Yeah. You can find a place this big. And it wouldn't have a view of the ocean, too. Um, let's see. Um, Harris, what other word in the English language are people not allowed to speak? To my knowledge, there's no other in, there's no other English uh, vocabulary, particularly race demands that, that be spoken except by them. And quote, yeah, you got a point there. Um, the preacher man, don't care about the N-word. I work with plenty of people that were... They were the N word. They exhibited totally, and they were total, totally people that represented the word. I don't understand what you're saying there. Uh, I am shook space right now. Thank you for the live stream. You're welcome. If you're not happy where you live, can you move straight away? Is there no lease arrangement? Well, it depends. Um, some some places they want you to sign a year lease. You get a discount if you do. I've gone month to month everywhere I've lived since I've been here. I do month to month. Um, on this apartment, I put down one month's rent and or one, one month's deposit and first month's rent. That's it. Uh, same place with my last the last place I lived. The same thing. One month deposit, one month rent, which I I got that back when I moved out. Dulce Vita, the thing I didn't like about there is they wanted one month's uh, last month's rent plus another month's rent as deposit for damage, and then first month's rent. So you had to pay three months' rent to move in. Um, and when I moved out, they gave me that all that money back, but still, um, I preferred like one month and one month is enough, I think. Um, Going to buy a new shirt. Do you wear this one like three times, more times a week, dude? Oh, you don't like my shirt? What's wrong with my shirt? My mother bought me this shirt. I'm going to block you. I don't like you anymore. Preacher man, you're gone. Go away. Go watch something else. Um, Goddamn. Uh, yeah. Um, I received my social security and I, I uh, teach English online and I have my YouTube. So I have three things. I recommend doing that. Having the more, the more streams of income, the better off you are, you know. Um, and also you're allowed to make if you're actually living outside the U.S., you're allowed to make like $100,000 a year before you have to pay any taxes. So I follow my taxes on the IRS's website. Last year, I didn't pay anything. This year, I probably won't either, so I'm not making anywhere near 100000 But anyway. I can't really comment on that, uh, Red Horse, because I don't know anything about it. I know they're protesting some restriction. I think they're, they're protesting having to be vaccinated to be a truck driver. And um, I said this before on my channel. I'm vaccinated, I'm boosted, I've had COVID in 2020, but I do not believe anybody should be forced to take the vaccine. I don't believe anybody should get fired from their job because they're not vaccinated. I think it's your body, your right, and uh, just because I decided to get vaccinated, I don't think you should have to be vaccinated because you're risking your life, not mine. So that's my opinion on that. Aside from my home, where do you go to you feel inspired? Um, I don't know. I'm always inspired. Uh, we went to a beautiful waterfall the other day, made a video about us. It. It's spectacular. I had a wonderful day with my friends there. And uh, the other day before that, we went up in the mountains and drove around up there. And it's just, you know, it was great and pleasant. I got a lot of friends here. I, I get inspired by my friends. Wow. What would it cost to buy this house? Um, this is a two level house. The lower level, the owner and his, his wife and son live there. And I have the whole top of the house, which I like my half better. I like because it's all open up here. They got a lot of bedrooms downstairs. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, well over a million dollars for sure. Well over probably two million. Um, thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, but yeah, um, it's a great life here. It really is, you know, great life. Um, Hi, Mark. Do you think Bitcoin will go back up to over 60000 per share? What did you buy and hold XRT? Well, you know, first of all, happy Philippines. Um, I'm no expert on cryptocurrency or anything investment at all, period. You want to check out Rike, um, Life Beyond the Sea. He is an expert on cryptocurrency. And he talked about it today on a live stream, as a matter of fact. Um, I believe in XRP because I just read about it. I think it's a great opportunity. I've already quadrupled my money from what I got in on it. Um, it's like a lottery ticket for me. So I'm just going to buy and hold. I, I had the opportunity to buy Bitcoin back when it was like $10, $15 a coin. Um, and I didn't do it. At the time, I was going through some hardships where I didn't have money to put gas in my car. And so I didn't have the money to buy. Plus, it was difficult back then. You had to go on a website and it was very, you know, you had to really know what you're doing to buy Bitcoin. But I missed that. I missed that boat. I mean, I could have got in on. I knew about it, and I didn't do it. So um, maybe this will be my chance, my lottery ticket. So I've got about a thousand coins XRP. I'm just gonna hold on to it. You know, so that's all I can really tell you about that. I'm using a Samsung Galaxy S10. Um, when I use my laptop, I got a cheap little laptop, a little Chinese laptop, like two hundred fifty dollars. So it's got a crappy camera on it, and the keyboard doesn't even work. So um, I use my phone for everything, you know. Let's see. Uh, get out of crypto now. I don't, I'm not going to, man. It's like I told you. It's like a lottery ticket for me. I don't, you know, if it all goes to zero tomorrow, it doesn't affect my life in any way. And so uh, I'm just going to hang on to it. You know, it's, I've got nothing to lose, really. Um, I know all about Panama. I've been to Panama many, many times. Been to Panama Canal, been down there. And you're right, Panama is a great place to retire. It's just, um, it, it, everybody's got different tastes. And I don't speak Spanish. You know, you got to speak Spanish if you live down there. But Panama is a great place. They're very open to Americans coming there. So nothing wrong with Panama. I mean, some people like it there. You know, that's your choice, you know. Medium rent for a one bedroom apartment, 3300 a month. Wow. That's more money than I make. I could not live there. Um, here's Philip. Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm living the dream. You know, I consider where I was three years ago in America, where I am now. I mean, it's like a thousand percent different. I had no idea when I came here that it could possibly work out as well as it did. I mean, it was a, a leap of faith. I mean, I didn't know one person in the Philippines. I'd never been to the Philippines. I had $600 in cash, which I changed into pesos, pocket full of maxed out credit cards and no plan really. And I stayed in a crappy Airbnb for the first 10 days. My plan was to uh, teach English online. I'd already got hired by Cambly. So I had that in my pocket. But then my, my laptop, I dropped it at the airport, broke my, my brand new $300 laptop at the airport before I even got to my Airbnb. And so I, there went my way of making money online. And so, and then I, three days later, I was hiking in a river and, and dropped my, uh, my pack into the water and lost my brand new cell phone in the, in the river. So it, things weren't looking good when I first got here. It was like getting worse and worse. But then... I took my Swiss Army knife, took my computer apart, put it back together, and miraculously, it, it worked. It came back to life. I had no idea what I did. Um, the cell phone was ruined, my brand-new Samsung phone. So I went to the, the mall and with one of my credit cards, bought the cheapest Samsung phone you could get, which is like 100 bucks, and used that. But then slowly, slowly, my life came back together and started making money on Cambly, and things got better, moved to a better apartment, made some friends, and every day it's gotten better, every day. So I'm, I'm lucky. Um, I don't have Bitcoin. I don't have any Bitcoin. Um, my friends do. Let's see. 
One of the best moments is when Tim K confronted Andy Omar at the V8. Andy ran like a bitch. I saw that. I saw that. I like Tim K. I like his. I'm, I subscribe to his channel. He's a big guy. Have you ever seen pictures of him when he was in the army? He was a brute. He's a big, scary guy. Um, and Andy Omar is a little run. And he ran into him on the streets of Manila one time. And, and Andy Omar just ran away because he's really come down on Tim K. And this is this Tim K guy. You know, if you ever watch this channel, I mean, he's just a nice guy. He's married to a Filipina. He's got a little baby. And he's just kind of a travelogue, like a, a life, day in the life of them, you know, whatever they do that day. And it's just a sweet channel. I mean, nothing controversial. And this Andy Omar guy is just slamming him, saying nasty things about his wife. And, you know, he's lucky he didn't kill him. I mean, I, I'm surprised uh, Tim didn't just grab him by the neck and pop his head off. But, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I saw that. Let's see. Um, Let's see. Uh, video's pretty grainy, huh? Let me try something, okay? Hold on, guys. I'm going to try and switch internets here. Hold on. So tell me, um, Krieger888, tell me if uh, it's any better now, guys. Is it, con oh, Charlie, is it possible to have a uh, successful YouTube channel with the comments turned off to avoid the trolls? That's a good question. Um, Filipina P, what she does is you can choose to have um, hold all comments for review. And that's where no comments show up until you've, you reviewed them, then you click them and they, they show up on the on the uh, video. Uh, you can do that. Um, that's what she does because she gets a lot of trolls too. You can hold all comments. I never tried doing that, but I think people like to have the comments, especially on the live streams. Um, but I don't know how that would work out. Uh, my friend Paul, like what I do is I just block the nasty ones. I block those people from uh, from commenting at all on my channel. But um, what Paul does, he just leaves them up. And what happens is a lot of times. Uh, Someone will say something nasty, and then his other subscribers start attract, attacking the troll. And so that video is getting all these comments because you've got people basically fighting online. Like, they're all going back and forth, you know, attacking each other. But what YouTube's algorithm sees is a whole bunch of comments on that video. And so they start promoting that video. They don't look whether good comments or bad comments. They just look if it's being, uh, promote, if it's being uh, watched and it's being commented on. And so that's his theory. It works for him because Paul makes a lot more money than I do. Um, and so maybe that's that works for him. But I just don't like it. I just take the reason is, is like I said, I've got my mother and my daughter's watching. So I don't want them to see some nasty comment about me. So I block those people. Um, sounds great. OK, good. Um, thank you, Mark. Mark always has my back. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I have a VA, in, yeah. If you're if you're a veteran, uh, and you can go to the the VA in Manila, and also you can go to Guam or Hawaii and stuff too. So that's good too. Yeah, good for you, Philip. You reporting? Well, thank you so much for Mark reporting. I appreciate that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we've got people. Um, who scam who are um, I've got regular viewer subscribers and some of these trolls have actually cloned their channel with their picture and using their name to say nasty things. Have a great show. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. A YouTube vlogger channel question. How many views do you need to a month to be making around $1,350 a month? Um, that's hard to say because every video 
has its own rating on how much money you're making per thousand views. And I've got like a hundred videos. And so it's all put together. Um, if you're going to make $1,300 $1, a month, you're probably going to need about 200,000 views per month. I'd say to make that much money. Um, I've had, as, I've made as much as a million, I've had as much as a million views a month. I've had as little as, you know, a hundred thousand. So it goes up and down a lot. No, I don't. Only thing I've got as far as investments is I've got my my XRP crypto. I get royalties from a book I wrote a long time ago. Um, my social security, and I teach online. That's it. Uh, sorry about that. I can't really do much about the quality of the video right now because it's I've got, I put on my best one. Um. Let's see. Um, I like what Denzel Washington said. You will never be criticized by someone working harder than you. That's true. Yeah, there's a new requirement for insurance, but it's not really that much, so don't worry about it. Yeah, if you, do you know what it's going to – have you checked into prices? I'd like to know what it's going to cost. Um. Um, let's see. I like Joe Rogan too. <laughs> Thank you, Ronald. You guys protect me. I really appreciate it, you know. Thanks, James. Thank you. Ooh, dear man, as is. What's up, my name? Yeah, that's no, I don't want to put that out there. Mark Hanks, uh, that's that's like Whoopi Goldberg. She changed her name to a, a Jewish name. I didn't know that. And uh, has no idea what they want, went though, or what they went through. When I was in the Army, they say the N-word left and right. Yeah, I've heard that, too. I didn't know she changed her name. I didn't know Goldberg wasn't her real name. I didn't know that. Yeah, I heard about that controversy. She was saying that, the Nazis and the Jews are both white people, so it wasn't a racist war. It was like white people against white people. And I see what she's saying. Like, yeah, the Nazis were, were you know, in the concentration camps, they were white people. Um, and there's people that, that will say uh, being Jewish is not a race, it's a religion. And I see their point there because Jews come from all over the world. So, you know, all Jews aren't white or black or brown. They're just different colors. So, yeah, but I don't know. This whole politically correct thing has gone too far in my opinion. You know, remember back in the 70s, like uh, say um, All in the Family, you couldn't put that show on TV today. You could not put it on TV today. It was so good, so well written. You had somebody like Archie Bunker who was not good, wasn't bad. He had good points, bad points. And uh, it, it was just, and then it was, you know, you had, it was balanced out by what his son-in-law said. So you couldn't do that today. People are too sensitive, you know. Um, let's see. Um, so going, I had singles about three years ago and you are correct in saying that it's painful. I think that, I think that it isn't talked about much that the effects last for at least a year. Yeah. I, the guy I knew that had the shingles, he said that months after he had it, he still had pain on his side where he had the shingles, even though it was all gone. But yeah, you get the vaccination for that. I highly recommend it. Uh, let's see. Um, the rental agreement is uh, writing or just oral agreement. Do you get a receipt or copy? Yeah, we had a rental agreement here. We all signed everything month to month. I all signed out. It's every place I've lived, a very simple rental agreement. Um, but yeah, it's usually on you know a piece of paper. Get a receipt and everything. No problem. I've lived in three different places here. I've had no problem at all. Mark Higgins, thank you, Mark, uh, for doing a great job and providing an excellent service for many people. Thank you so much. I just kind of answer you guys' questions and, you know, respond to the comments, um, and that's it. Let's see. Um, thumbs up. Thank you so much. 
Yeah, I have no idea what it would cost. It's more than I can afford. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with you when you are telling the black guy um, that he should be active in trying to eradicate the N-word. Sadly, hip-hop and rap culture glorify the use of the word. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Oh, uh, Linda, thank you so much for the $5. Uh, love the waterfall video. Okay. I don't get a lot of women watching my channel. It's usually old guys like me watching it, but it's so nice to know that there are uh, the occasional woman that watches my video. Hope I don't bore you too much. No, actually, it's cooler up here because um, I've got, since I'm higher up, Jack, I've got the breeze in the ocean more. So these windows, we leave all of our windows open 24-7. And we have you know nice breeze going through this apartment all day long, and it keeps it really cool in here. Uh, that's a good question. Um, once you've been here a year, what are the easiest Philippine identif identification cards to get in for expats? Once you've been here for a year, you have to get a, um, oh, what do they call it? I can't remember. It's a, it's a Philippine ID card, and you have to get that. And it's like a couple thousand pesos. It's just like an ID card, and uh, you get that, you know, automatically. You have to get it. And then the driver's license, get a Philippine driver's license. It's not too hard. If you have a driver's license already, it's pretty easy to get a Philippine driver's license. And, of course, you got your passport, so that's all you really need. Um, uh, truckers in Canada are protesting the end of all mandates for freedom. Well, good for them. Good for them. They have a right to do that. Richard Howe, you have a lot more patience than I have. I would hunt people down and beat their ass. <laughs> That's why I would never have a YouTube channel. Well, I understand, Richard, but I enjoy this. I have so much fun doing it, and it's changed my life. I've met so many friends. I met so many people with my YouTube channel. Um, it's a great supplement to my income. Um, it's something I can do anywhere I want. So it's just part of doing business, having the trolls. And I, you know, I just block them. Um, well, you're welcome, happy Philippines. But um, <laughs> Again, don't take financial advice from me. I mean, I'm just saying this is what I do. I'm hoping that XRP takes off someday, but I can't guarantee anything. So watch Rike's channel. I highly recommend it. Um, he knows a lot about crypto. I mean, a lot. A thousand times more than I do. And he, he believes in XRP. He's got XRP and he's got some other stuff too. So go over to his channel and check it out. I don't know. I Panama's too expensive. I didn't know that. I've never lived there. I've just been there a lot. It's too good to be true. It isn't. That's usually true. Um, Mark, can you get Lucentipil shipped to you from Canada or something? $40 a month is a bit stiff. <clears throat> the problem is the mail here is so damn slow and so expensive to send something to the Philippines. Like my mother sent me a credit card, just a credit card and an envelope. It was $100 to send that. Um, and also Lucentipil, I'm going to quit taking it. Tomorrow I'm actually going down and trying to, it's called, somebody, one of my subscribers said, try Nefedipine, nefedipine, because the Cinepril, one time last year, I woke up and my lips were all swelled up like I got stung by a bee. And my subscriber said that that happened to him. It's an allergic reaction to the and it can just happen randomly. You can be taking it for years, all of a sudden, boom, you wake up and your lips are all swelled up. And so I'm going to try and switch to something else. But um, yeah, I don't know if, if anybody out there knows another way to get it cheap. Um, but the mail here is just so slow and so expensive. It just takes months for a letter to get here, months for a letter to get uh, out of the country. So, yeah, I wish you could do that. Um, thank you so much for Super Sticker. I really appreciate that. First one, I'm second only second one I got today. Let's see. Um, Mark, when you say the house could be worth in the millions in the U.S. US and millions in U.S. dollars. I'm talking U.S. dollars. But, you know, again, I have no idea what this And I'm not going to ask the owner what he spent for it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's a well-built house. When the, when the typhoon came through here, we had trees falling down all around us. Didn't do a thing to this house. Not a thing. Didn't use a shingle, nothing. It's got a, a steel, steel shingles on the roof, you know. And so this house is built like a fortress. So nothing happened to the house at all. Um, so yeah, it's very well built. 
quality, high quality. You know, this is really high quality wood here on the floor. Everything's done to the higher standard too. So it's, I don't know what it would cost, but it'd be expensive. Uh, thank you. You might check out India as a source for it. Yeah, but the problem is getting it sent here. They probably get it from India anyway, but if you get it sent here, like <clears throat> I just go to the pharmacy and I pay what I have to pay for it. But uh, yeah, in America, was, well, in fact, the first time, when I, right before I came here, I had a prescription for lisinopril and I went to Walmart to get a three month supply and they gave it to me for free, for free. They said, oh, um, Sam's, not Sam's Club, but um, Myers is doing a special on this drug and they're giving it away for free. And so we have to match them. So they gave me three months supply for free at Walmart. Uh, Philip, uh, Duterte is supposed to change the law that a foreigner can own land that will be uh, deal change in the Philippines. Yeah, I've heard about that. I've heard about that. But you know, I mean, he's election's coming up, so if he's going to do that, take that change. I wonder when it's going to happen. But that would make a big difference here because you can't own land 100. percent You can own a condominium. Um, but of course you're just owning the condominium. You're not owning the land that it's built on. But as far as buying a house or building a house here, I, I don't recommend it. And hopefully they will change the law because then a lot of people will invest in the Philippines, but I would never build a house here. Yeah. How the hell can you come down on Tim K? Yeah, I agree. Tim K is a great guy. I mean, I love his channel. He's such a, such a nice guy. He's a soldier, you know, a retired soldier. So I don't know how I can do that, but this, they attack him. He has more trolls than me. Because his channel, I haven't checked recently. His channel is like four times more more subscribers than I've got. You know, he's got a very successful channel. Um, yeah, Rose Farms. Yeah, I'll check out Rose Farms. They've got those here. Um, Daniel, about the same. Best it's going to get. From there, probably, but it's still very decent video for stream from Philippines. Question: What's your favorite go-to food there? Probably chicken. We cook a lot of chicken, and uh, I make lasagna, and I also make a tuna casserole here. A little blurry. Yeah, I wish that's the only thing about Streamyard. I'm not happy with is the quality of the video because I can't. I, my internet's fine. If I would post this video, like make a video with my phone and post it, it'd be crystal clear. But when you do the live stream, it's like it's it's never very clear. And it doesn't matter if I use my computer or use my phone. It's the same quality. Let's see. If I don't get out of here, I will be dead and withering another year. I'm in my late 60s and all five of my... Lifelong friends are dead. Three of them died from heart attacks, from stress, two from cancer. Well, Richard, life is short, man. I had quadruple bypass surgery. I almost died a couple times back in America. Life is too short. I mean, get rid of your stuff. Take the leap and just come here. And maybe, you know, even if you're going to die young, you might have a couple of really good years. But <clears throat> the three years I've been here, and I've had some good years in my life, a lot of good years. I've traveled around the world. And this has been three of the best years I've ever had. Three of the best years I've ever had. And it gets better every year. So, um, yeah, I, I would say for you, come here. Just come here and see what happens. Well, you know. Like I said, when my, my family's watching the videos and somebody says something vulgar, you know, then I, uh, I, I block them. That's all there is to it. It's my right, you know. Let's see. Um, does appear to be better. That's good. Yeah, I changed it to a different one. What? What about female? Yeah, they're, they're here. They are female retirees here. I see them. I've seen, you know, not as many as there are men, obviously, but I do see them here. Also, there's a lot of guys that come here and bring their wives with them. Many. I know a guy from Japan has him here with his wife. Germany has his wife here. Um, let's see. Australia, South Africa. 
Korea, uh, Russia, all here with their wives from their country, and they're retired here. Also, America. I met a really nice lady a couple of years ago. Um, they've been here for like 10 years. Her and her husband retired here from California. Yeah, that's true. And it, YouTube is not easy to make a make money at. The title of my book is called The Souls of Duma. D-U-M-A-H. It's on Amazon. It's a picture of a guy with wires coming out of his head. I write like supernatural stuff, kind of like Stephen King. Uh, good question, Adam. Is it difficult to maintain a relationship with a Filipino if you're not religious at all? No, it's not. I'm not religious at all at all. And uh, Jen is so so religious, but yeah, no, it's not a problem. Um, not a problem at all, I don't think. Uh, I don't know. On my $30 phone, video and sound perfect. That's good to know. <laughs> Your $30 phone. <laughs> Thank you, Scott, for the thumbs up. I appreciate that. Oh, this is interesting. Whoopi's real name is Karen Johnson. What's wrong with Karen Johnson? Why would she change it to Whoopi Goldberg? Hmm. Interesting. Linda, thank you so much. Positive good luck in the future. Thank you so much, Linda. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is my home. This is my home. This is where I live. Been here for like seven months now. Oh, thanks. Good to know. I'll, I'll use this. Um, I've got three different. I've got two PDLTs, and I've got one that's globe, and this is the globe one. Um, and so, you know, I never know which one's going to be better. Because, see, I, I see myself. I don't see the quality of the video. It would be helpful for StreamYard if they show the person broadcasting what the quality of their video is, and they could do something about it. But I have no idea how it is unless you guys tell me. Yeah, I agree with that. Live and let live. Hey, Mark, I'm in the Bay Area, and your internet video quality is great. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. Good to know. Um, um, yeah, Archie Bunker and, and, Jeff, and George Jefferson were hilarious. Did you ever see the one on um, All in the Family when uh, Sammy Davis Jr. came on, and he kissed uh, Archie Bunker on the cheek? I mean, you... You just couldn't do that stuff today. It was just brilliant writing. They talked about Native Americans and people from other races, and things are very edgy, you know. And, and Archie, it wasn't that he was a racist or a bigot. He was just, like, misinformed, you know. And then Meathead, his son-in-law, would try and straighten him out, and they get these big arguments, and you just couldn't do that today. It was so well written, that show. Anyway. Yeah, they do. I think the um, what's uh, Modern Family is kind of edgy, too. I watched a little bit of that years ago, and that's a little edgy of a show. You dropped yourself in the river. Yeah, I, I had the Samsung S10. It's supposed to be waterproof, you know, but it was in the river overnight. And finally, some boys found it to me, found it, gave it back to me, but it was ruined. You know, I couldn't get it back to life. I just took the SIM card out of it. It was a brand new phone, too, and I I actually bought it with a credit card, so it wasn't like I had that $600 to spend. So it was really depressing. Yeah, that happens a lot. Of, um, there's several people that have had, they're, they're using their name. There's one guy, I can't remember his name, he was just on a few minutes ago, and he comments all the time on my videos, and a really nice guy, and all of a sudden I get this really nasty comment, and it's not him. I know it's not him. It's somebody else who's using his name. I just can't believe to go all the trouble to set up a fake, you know, YouTube account, a fake email and fake name, all this just to say something nasty on somebody's YouTube channel. I mean, get a life. Richard, I just think how great America would be today if our forefathers would have bought all the Asian slaves to America. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I had, you know, back when, remember the, um, was it, um, Motorola Razor. Remember the Motorola Razor? I had one of those, the flip phones, when they first came out. 
I dropped that phone in the ocean. I dropped it in the river. I got it wet. I lost it overnight. And it was in my brother's yard when it rained. That phone worked no matter what. It would come back to life. It was indestructible. You could drop it. You had an extra battery for it. Take the battery, put in a new one. You know, you, you could text with it, you know, like uh, they did in Born Conspiracy. But what a great phone that was. And now these, these phones now, like I had an iPhone, a little bit of water on it was ruined. You know, a little bit of condensation on the table was ruined. So this phone here is supposed to be water resistant. It's been pretty good. Love your waterfall video. Thank you so much, Linda. Dominic, you're absolutely right about all in the family. Great show, but couldn't be on today because of excessive wokeness. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, that river dog guy, he, God, he hates me. I mean, he, he, he did a video that he sent to us one time screaming, saying he was going to take Jen away from me and she was his and wasn't mine and just ranting and raving. And we know about that guy. He's from California. I even know where he lives. No one's license plate number and everything. So we've tracked that guy down. We'll keep an eye on him. By the way, I'm not black. I'm white. Okay, that's fine, Roger. Thank you for watching, Roger. Appreciate it. Thank you for commenting. You know, we're just having a discussion here. Um, you couldn't even put the office on these these days. Too many upright people, uptight people. You're probably right about that. That's another great show. God, that was a good show. Who would have thought a show about people working in an office in a cubicle at a paper company would be interesting? <laughs> but the actors and the writing is what made that show good. It started in England, you know. It was actually a show in England, and they, they cloned it and did it in America. Let's stop it. Let's see. Yeah, ACR card. It's called ACR card. That's right. I forgot. You're right about that. After It's not 60 days. It's um, I think I was here for a year. I don't remember, but, yeah, I've had like three of them. Fat Albert. Yeah, Fat Albert. Another one couldn't be made today. Um, you know, something else is like I've seen people, actors who like they were at a, at a party back in the 1980s, a costume party, and they came as Michael Jackson. So they put blackface on their face. Man, they're just coming down on them like, you know, unbelievable, you know, saying like, you know, they're racist and they're making fun of black people. And it's just a costume party. And if you're a white, white guy and you want to be Michael Jackson, you got to put on some makeup. And I don't know, it's just too much. Uh, the most video content I really like is interviewing expats, which is really the title of your channel. There's much info about this interview. Yeah, that's my thing too, man. But so many guys have left here. Thousands have left this island. There's not enough people to interview anymore. I was lucky enough to run into a, a gentleman the other day at the waterfall a surgeon from the hospital here, emergency room doctor, uh, was in America in the military, Filipino, full-blooded Filipino, but was been in the, in the Navy in America. Because of that, he got his American citizenship, went to school in America as a doctor, came back here, practices medicine here, but he can go back to America where he has a home in San Diego. But just a really cool guy, he's 70s, and he's agreed to let me interview him. So I'm hoping... When his schedule permits, I'm going to be interviewing him hopefully this week. But just a really cool guy, really cool guy. So, And I've got another guy that I'm interviewing. He owns a kite surfing business here. And I've got another guy I'm interviewing who um, worked on cruise ships as an IT guy, Filipino. So I've got some people lined up, you know. But, yeah, it's hard to find people. It really is that are interesting that are here. Hello. Nice to see you. Yep. Um, that's a good question. How long can you drive in your license? You can drive for a year. Um, however, I got pulled over just the other day. My, um, my registration was expired. So they gave me a ticket, which was like $5. And, um, but my driver's license has been expired for like six months. My Kentucky driver's license, but these guys, these cops, they have no idea to where to look for the expiration date on a foreign driver's license. They just look at it and they give it back to you. They never even look at the date. One guy said, um, well, is this an international driver's license? Yeah, inter international driver's license. But it, it's not good in North Korea and it's not good in China. Okay, they gave it back to me. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, thank you so much for Super Sticker. Um, Gary Johnson. I don't know. I'm not sure why anyone would want to speak badly of you. I find your honesty refreshing. You're straightforward and haven't heard you speak badly of anyone. I listen to you because I feel better. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Gary. Very kind of you. I try and just, you know, answer comments and have a conversation with you guys and find interesting people to interview. Oh, this is a good question. Um, Mark, who do you think would win between Manny Pacquiao and Roberto Duran during their prime? I'd, I'd go with Manny Pacquiao. Now, if they were the same weight class, uh, Floyd Mayweather, I think, would win. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, this place is a steal for $600 a month. Absolute steal. And you're just seeing one room. There's three bedrooms, a nice kitchen, and a big deck on the side of the house, too. You know, and two bathrooms. So, yeah, it's a deal. Yeah, the ACR card resembles the driver's license. It, it contains biometric data and can be updated automatically. I didn't know that. You think the ACR card has my um, my uh, vaccine stuff on there? Because I've got that as a separate um, app on my phone, too. Oh, here's something. Um, Phil Hall, 007. As a 65-plus black man, I hate the use of the word, the N-word. However, perhaps non-black people should have the dialogue with black people before forming opinions. I agree with you, you know, but there's not a lot of black people here. I have only met a few. But, uh, yeah, I agree with you. But I just, um, I had a black roommate in college, Phil, and I just, I think it's an ugly word. And I don't think anybody should be using it. I don't think it should be illegal, but I think, and I can see it in a movie or something where it's, you know, has the right context or whatever. But <clears throat> I just think by, with black people using it, even as a friendly term with their friends and, you know, around other black people that they're just, um, they're promoting the word. And I think you should exterminate the word, in my opinion. It has ugly connotations. Uh Okay, he thinks uh, Duran would whoop, whoop his ass. Um, uh, tourists who extend their stay past not 59 days have to obtain an ACR card as do students and employees with their free range employee. Okay, good to know. When did I get married? Uh, April 17th. Um, by the way, I'm a big fan and greens from the Bay Area. Go Bengals. Bengals. I was in. I thought the Bengals was Cincinnati. I'm not a big football fan, but I thought the Bengals was Cincinnati. That's um, my sister was actually a cheerleader for the Cincinnati Bengals back in the 70s. But thanks for watching, Phil. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, it's weird. It's like I, I've got a blood pressure monitor, and some days my blood pressure is less lower than normal. You know, like it's like you know less than 120 over 80, and other times it's higher. So I don't know why it goes up and down. I haven't figured it out, but I'll tell you one thing. When I was back in America, before I had my heart surgery, one day I woke up, felt fine, didn't you know, didn't feel ill at all, but I was deaf. I couldn't hear a thing, totally deaf. And so I'm freaking out. I get in my car and go to the prompt care center. The first thing you do is check your blood pressure. My blood pressure was like, you know, 220 over 250, some crazy number. They said I should have blown up. And they started giving me medications. And it took them like four hours to get my blood pressure down. And a couple days later, my hearing came back. And then I realized I had a problem. Um, yeah, if you can get them. I don't think so, Mark. Um, I think the rentals, the price of the apartments I lived in before, you know, going back almost three years, they're the same price now as they were before. So I don't think they're going to raise the rates. Um, and a lot of apartments are empty right now. Um, like, Big Rock, where I literally just moved from, when I moved in there, they were, you know, full. Now they're empty. I don't think there's anybody living there at all. And they've got like got 15 apartments, brand new place too. So I don't think that's going to happen. I wouldn't worry about that. Um, hook you up on them drugs. First one free, then after got to pay up. 
another drug dealer on the legal way. Um, favorite rock band from the 70s. Uh, wow, let's see. I was, um, let's see. I'd say Led Zeppelin, Aerosmith, ACDC. Um, who else? I'd say that Aeros I'd say Led Zeppelin number one. Led Zeppelin number one. Um, yeah, that's my time period. You know, I grew up during that time. I actually used to work rock concerts like in the eighties. I was uh, um, I used to work. I actually rock concerts like I worked for Prince, Black Sabbath, Quiet Riot, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts, um, a bunch of bands. Just doing like setting up the stages, spotlight things like that. If you're close to LBC, send your package or a pouch there. It's cheap. I just sent a credit card to my sibling and an antic jam test kit and some inhalers for $12 in a plastic pouch. Really? Now that's good information. LBC. Very good information. Thank you for that. I'll check into that. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Oh, good. That's good to know. Good to know. Yeah, it is a lot of floor polish. <laughs> I used to own a roller skating rink, so I know what a big floor is like. And uh, I had a 16,000 foot square, uh, 16,000 square foot skating floor in Utah. Wow. Super. You saw Ali and Sphinx fight? Wow. That's exciting. I met, I met Muhammad Ali three times. And my little brother, who's a contractor, remodeled uh, Muhammad Ali's kitchen in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Used to see him every day. I also met Mike Tyson. Good. So much. Good to know that. Good to know. Uh, Jennifer Terry YouTube shows tells you all about the new rules. She's very good. Yeah, I've heard that. I don't, I've never watched her channel, Mark. I heard the same thing. I've heard her name mentioned. So you guys looking for information about coming here, might want to check out Jennifer Terry's channel. I don't know anything about it, but I've heard good things. CoQ10. Yeah, I heard that, but I've never seen it for sale here. Like, I have a hard time finding um, Centrum Silver Vitamins. So, you know, you go to Walmart or Walgreens and or the grocery store in America, they got a whole wall of vitamins. You can get all that stuff. They don't have that here. You know, they have behind the counter a little bottle of, of a Centrum Silver, and they're like four times more expensive here than they are back in America. So I was really big into taking vitamins. I used to take uh, CoQ10, but now I can't get it anymore. So, yeah. Let's see. Um No, there's furniture here. You not look. You don't see. There's a whole table right here with four chairs. Right over there is a whole couch, table, and coffee table. You can't soft camera. And there's also a little cubby hole back there with another sofa in there. So there's there's things you don't see. There's a lot of furniture here you don't see. But it's a big room. It's great for parties. Like there, we had our wedding reception here. We had tables up here and a buffet and everything. Same for Christmas. I'm definitely on my way there. I'm waiting and watching for a couple of months to see what happens with all the crazy restrictions. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it'll, it'll ease up even more soon. If you make a very loyal subscriber or wrench, they can monitor the trolls and delete them. Yeah, that's true. I've done that before. Um, I've, I've had a monitor before. Sometimes Jen does it for me. Linda, $5. If I see you're so positive, good luck with your future travels with Jen. Thank you so much, Linda. I really appreciate that. No, there's no place except Medicare. I did hear that Humana has a um, option where you can use your Medicare over here. You pay extra for it, but you have to be admitted through the emergency room of a hospital, like have like a heart attack or accident or something like that. But you might want to check into that. So, yeah, you can't use it over here. Matter of fact, I tried to drop my Medicare Part B because it's costing me almost $100 a month, and I can't use it, obviously. Um, I filled out a form and everything that they sent me, and they've still never taken it off, so I've still got, I'm still paying it. Uh, hey, Mark, just said go for it. 
he had a quadruple bypass and he's enjoying life to the end. Yeah, um, when I had my bypass, I was literally um, mowing my lawn first time in the year, like in May and um, or April. I can't remember. Anyway, um, my uh, arm started hurting. I was sweating, went out of breath, went in to my doctor. He sent me to have an EKG and a chest X-ray. They said, oh, things fine. Nothing wrong with you. And I said, well, my dad had quadruple bypass surgery when he was my age. So they said, well, tomorrow morning, I'm going to give you an angiogram. So I went to the hospital, had an angiogram. The next morning, woke up from that, and these doctors were standing around me and said, look, you have four arteries that are 90% blocked, can't do a stent. If you don't have surgery, ASAP, you're going to die, period. And so they put me in an ambulance, took me to another hospital. At like 3 o'clock in the morning, they were prepping me for surgery. I had quadruple bypass. Um, and it took me a while to get over, you know, recover from it. But... I would never have it again. If I had, they told me tomorrow, so Mark, your arteries are clogged up again. If you don't have another bypass, you're going to die. I just die. I wouldn't go through it again. For me, it was just a horrible, horrible experience. I don't like being paralyzed, being on a respirator where you're, you're conscious, this thing's breathing for you. You can't move. You have no control of your own body. Nurses, doctors come in, do whatever the hell they want to you. you. You're not even like a human being. So, no, I'd never do it again. I'm glad I'm alive, but I wouldn't do it again. Um, speaking of female expat, Diane Poole of Tambobo Bay came with her husband many years ago. She now is a widow, and I'm glad she's still around. Ben Snow is trying to get an interview with her. Huh, I don't know about her. I don't know her. Um, let me see something here. My... My phone is uh, out of charge, so let me hit my charger up here real quick. It's about ready to go black on me. There we go. Charging now, okay. Um, yeah, I have to meet her. I go to Tambobo Bay every once in a while because I know... Um, What's his name? Um, Nigel, that owns the marina down there. And I've interviewed him a couple of times. I'm going to go see him again. And Tambobo is kind of a cool place. Um, on my way here. Yeah, Medicare is not available outside of the USA. That's true. Yeah, the floors are great. Everybody likes my floors. Much better. That's good to know. And I got my power hooked up. Mark, I understand that you had a quadruple bypass. Are you worried they are taking uh, testosterone increases your, your, I don't know how to pronounce that activity? No, um, yeah, I'm doing a TRT replacement therapy. I've been doing it for about a year now, no problem. I do the injections. Um, you can buy that here online uh, or in the pharmacy without a prescription. No big deal. Um, yeah, it's made a big difference. Like I feel better, it gives me more energy. I think I've gained a little bit more muscle and lost a little bit of belly fat. Um, of course, it increases your libido. So I'm all for it. Joe Rogan does it, you know, he's in great shape. So it hasn't really had any adverse effects so far. Um, but yeah, you know, it works for me. Well, thank you. Spacious, yeah. She's back there somewhere. <laughs> your video quality is fantastic. Let the complainers get the down on the quality. The problem is that you're on there again. Good job. Well, thank you so much for letting me know that, Chris, because I can never tell. I'm glad the quality is good. Michigan. Yeah, I, I used to spend a lot of time in Michigan, Scott, because um, I work for Park West Gallery, and they're, they're based in Southfield, Michigan. I like Michigan. I mean... Uh, Great university there, one of the best universities in America. Hi, Mark. I'm a Filipina here in Los Angeles, and when I'm not busy, I look for the foreigners in Los Angeles, and there's a lot of them. Yeah, there is a lot of them. Um, the Archie Bunker episode where the draft dodger comes for dinner was pretty dramatic television for the time. I never saw that one. I never saw that one. Huh. 
Richard, I've been watching your YouTube channel for over five years. You're on my top three YouTube. Thank you so much, Richard. I really appreciate that. Very kind of you to say that. Benny Hill. Yeah, I forgot about Benny Hill. I used to watch Benny Hill and also Faulty Towers. Um, no, I didn't delete it. Mark, uh, I left a message in your last video about having a bank account in the U.S. If you move here, I see it's gone. You didn't agree? No, I don't know what that's about. Um, I don't, um, me and Paul kind of think about the same thing. Um, I don't have a bank account here. I know a lot of guys that do. I, I use my bank account in America for everything. Um, I recommend Charles Schwab because they give you back your fees. Um, but yeah, and I'm no expert on the banking anyway, Mark. So uh, if, I, if it's deleted, it was an accident. But I didn't delete your message on purpose. Sorry about that. I had a Motorola Razor for iPhones. We'll get a waterproof case for it, sounds like. Yeah, a Motorola Razor was a great phone. That, you know, a flip phone you put in your pocket. It was small enough to carry around. Great sound. Too many sensitive people nowadays can't even look at other people. They may say you're, you're mad-dogging them. Might get shot in L.A., yeah. That's what's nice about here in the Philippines is people... They're non-confrontational. You know, I never see Filipinos arguing with each other. I don't see people like uh, road rage here. It's just very peaceful. You know, they're, it's, you know, Dumaguete is known as the, um, the city of gentle people, and I believe that. And it's just so nice that you don't have, you know, all this animosity here that you find in America. Well, thousands of people have left, but they haven't left because there's anything wrong with the Philippines. They left because their visa has expired. They had to go home and do their taxes. They had uh, a family member died, and then they can't get back in. That's the reason they left. I know a lot of guys that, that had to leave, didn't want to leave, and they're waiting to get back in. <clears throat> so that's what's happened. It's not because they didn't like the Philippines. Um, <clears throat> not too bad. Um, I did a video on it. On our property here, we had a lot of trees, like seven huge trees come down. Um, our road was blocked, a lot of inter a lot of wires coming down all over the place, like power lines down everywhere. But as far as uh, deaths and things like that, very little here. But, you know, where Justin and Finn Snow went, which is like two hours from here, there was a lot of devastation there and people died. But here, we got off easy. We got off easy. I'm right on the ocean, so we got off easy here. But uh, it was pretty exciting, I'll tell you what. Good show. Thank you so much. Topic. Oh, Tropic Thunder. Yeah, that's another one. I'm surprised that, um, what's his name, the actor? Um, Robert Downey Jr. What, I like him as an actor. Um, yeah, can you imagine doing that show today where he was in blackface? Huh, I can't believe it. Joe Rogan talked to him about that not too long ago. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I didn't like that movie, though. I didn't think it was that good of a movie. They would never cast Carol Connor today for TV. Not attractive enough, too much focus on physical appearance. Yeah, I agree. Like, you watch TV now, everybody's good looking. You know, every character is good looking. And uh, you need to have more people that are like, you know, look like real people. And plus, you know, in All in the Family, they were all were brilliant actors, every one of them. You know, Rob Reiner directed it, you know, or acted in it, and now he's a famous director. Yeah, she does. Jen, Jen does a lot of, it's hard for taking care of this apartment. She does it well. Yeah, I understand. Tropic Thunder, I know. Yeah, it's huge. Um, I have a fiance that lives in the province of Southern Cebu Island with her parents who are vegetable farmers. We have been engaged for over two years. I'm on my way. Good for you, Richard. I hope I get to meet you in person. Look me up if you ever come over here. No, no problem with spiders here. What we do have is uh, tucos, these little lizards. They get in the house and they eat all the bugs that are in here. But, yeah, there's not a lot of spiders. I do have a spider right there. I can see him. Um, I had a video. I, I think it's not. It's gone now. But there was a big yellow spider, like about that big. And I was at the market, at the fruit market, and this boy that was selling the fruit had this spider that's walking up and down his arm as his pet. And the boys here, they'll catch spiders. They keep them in little boxes, and they have a string. 
They put one spider on this side, one spider on that side, and the fighters fight, and whichever one gets knocked off, he loses. But yeah, there's, there's not, there's, there's more, just as many spiders in America, especially in Kentucky or Florida, than there are here. So no problem with spiders. Do the Philippine police expect bribes like the Thai police? Not that I've seen. Um, just the opposite. Every interaction that I've had with the police here, they have been nice. They have been courteous. They've cut me a break. Like they went back when we first had the lockdown two and a half years ago, they had set up roadblocks and you had a, had a pass and you're only allowed to go on certain days, like depending on your pass, like you go Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those are the only days you could go into town to do your shopping. And I, I didn't get it. And uh, I was on my motorcycle going to town, so I had the wrong day. And they let me through anyway. Okay, you know, going through. Um, with my registration, like I got a ticket the other day, you know, and they were really nice to me. No no hard feelings or anything and polite. Um, they don't look for reasons to arrest you here. They don't look for reasons to give you a traffic ticket. There's no cops out with speedy with um, radar detectors or pulling people over for like a life that's out or whatever. Like they're not out looking for reasons to pull people over. Like you have to call the police to show up. And all, actually the, my landlord here, his wife's brother is like the chief of police for uh, Dumaguete. And all the police I met here have been very nice. I'll tell you a story. I was at, um, it was about a year ago. I was at the red table where all the guys hang out in Valencia. And there was this guy there. I'd never seen him before, but he was at, he was obviously, insane or on drugs he was like shouting at the sky walking around waving his arm this is in the afternoon middle of the afternoon he was walking around at people people's tables and taking their beers and drinking them just totally out of control well somebody called the police and so this pickup truck shows up it's got two benches in the back no locks or anything and four guys get out uh one of them had a stick the other ones had no guns no tasers no nothing and he'd gone back behind some buildings they walk back behind the buildings where this guy is. Ten minutes later, they come out. The guys, there, the four of them are walking. The four guards or four policemen with this guy in the middle. He's not handcuffed. He's totally docile. They walk to the truck. He gets in on his own accord, sits there. No handcuffs, no nothing, no violence, no yelling. They're not hitting him with a stick, nothing. And they drive away, all peaceful. And how those guys did that, I don't know. But they totally somehow calmed him down. No violence, no handcuffs and took him away. And uh, I was very impressed with it. So, yeah, police are good here. Hey, Mark, let me know if you want me to renew your driver's license here in Louisville. I have a one mile from Bowman Field, Joe Ritchie. I'd love for you to renew my driver's license, but how would you do that? Because <clears throat> I looked at I could. you can do it online only if your address is the same. Like, I don't live in that house anymore. That's the house that I got. Uh, I lost in the bankruptcy. <clears throat> so my address is now my mother's house. But yeah, if there's a way to do it, that would be great, Joe. Um, and you could send it to my mother, and she could send it to me. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, if it's possible, that would be great. I don't know how you would do that though. My email is on all my on all my uh, videos. So you can contact me on that if it's possible. But I think I'm just going to get my uh, Philippine driver's license. Uh, Jen's got hers, and we know how to get it done. So we'll probably just do that. Uh, hey, North Carolina, USA, work American Airlines flying over single. What's open? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, yeah, everything's open. I used to live in North Carolina. I lived in Greensboro. And my brother has a house in, in North Carolina, too. I love North Carolina. Um, yeah, I think you're right. He's a fan of the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. Yeah, I used to. Uh, like I said, my sister was a cheerleader for them. Yeah, I lived in uh, Crestwood, Kentucky, which is by Louisville. Thank you so much, Adrienne. I really appreciate that. By the police of Gatorade, you'll be golden. <laughs> yeah, but I've had no, no police even like nothing about bribes that I've heard of with the police. Now there's, there are fixers here, like. To get a driver's license, some people use the fixer to, to get certain things done there. It's not because it's corrupt. It's just like you pay some money to grease the, the bureaucracy to get something done in a day that would take a week or something. You can just pay extra, you know. So 
I wouldn't mind doing that. Oh, I see. Um, I don't understand why last plane what's open. I don't. I don't understand. Like the whole country is going to be open on the tenth, if that's what you mean. Los Angeles, Red River Gorge. I've been there. What a beautiful place that is, Red River Gorge, Kentucky. It's gorgeous there. Beautiful. I like Red River Gorge. Uh, for rent, that's a good question. I, mean, I don't know because I've never had a COVID test here. Um, they're doing them here. I know that they're requiring it, you know, so I'm, I'm sure you can get it done, but I have no idea where you would get it done at. Um, I think you'd have to ask at a pharmacy or something. Uh, greens from San Francisco kind of with the Philippines opening back up in a few days. The tourists, do you see a, a big wave coming over or, or trickle at first? I think it's going to be medium, Gary. I think some guys are waiting to make sure that, you know, they don't change the rules on them. But there's a lot of guys been waiting a long time, especially the ones that have relationships here. The guys that have been, they're waiting to come and be with the girl that they've met here or met online. They've already got their tickets. They're going to be here like next week. Um, so I think within the next six months, you're going to see a wave. Because so many people want to come here. So many. And it was, there was a lot of people when I first came here, it was full of, of foreigners. They were everywhere and they loved it. They were all having a great time. So hopefully we'll get a lot. I want them to come. Oh, congratulations. Uh, Jeff Robertson. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Don't forget Pink Floyd. Don't forget the doors. Um, don't forget Milo, who just died recently. Love Milo. Um, yeah, there's so much good. The music of the 70s, I mean, I'm prejudiced because that was my era, but I think it was the best when it comes to rock music. I was some great music back then. That's right. Um, is casinos open? Can you take your, your, uh, she get back to the hotel. Oh, um, I don't know about casinos. I don't think there is any casinos here. Um, I think there is in Manila and Cebu. Um, that's that's the thing about uh, – I've heard Rike was saying the other day that they've changed the rules here. Like if you have a girl and try and bring her back to your hotel, if she's not on – if she wasn't there when you registered, they might not, might not let you bring her in. It'll say they have a no-guest policy. Uh, I haven't seen that here, but I've heard about it. So – you might want to check into that before you get your hotel. Like, ask them at the front desk. Um, let's see. I'm going to block you. Um, let's see here. Uh, if you're concerned about uh, cardiovascular disease, pardon the arteries, check out uh, Ivor Cummings' YouTube channel. Watch this older stuff. It's an amazing education. Also, Dr. Ford Brewer. I'll check it out. Medicare Part B now is $170 a month for regular people. Some low income is people pay less. I get over $180 a month Social Security. Good for you. <clears throat> Yeah, I tried to take it off, and they actually, when they sent me my new car, they sent me a form that I could drop Medicare Part B if I wanted to. So I filled out the form. I signed it, had a witness. I sent it back, um, not FedEx, but um, DHL, three months ago, and they'd never done anything. No, they weren't. As a matter of fact, they said everything was fine. I had an angiogram. I was life flighted off a ship one time. I had a heart attack and they did an angiogram, said my arteries were fine, no sense, no nothing needed. And two years later, 90% blockage. Who knows? They said it was hereditary, it wasn't lifestyle. My father, who was an athlete, <clears throat> had the same thing happen to him. He, he rode his bike from like Florida to Kansas City one time. And it's when he was like my age. And then like a year later, had quadruple, quadruple bypass surgery, never smoked or anything. So, yeah, it's just hereditary. Yeah, turmeric. Yeah, we have got some turmeric actually. 
Northern California. It's beautiful, Northern California. My mom bought my shirt. <laughs> I only wear, I, I used to wear this shirt when I do my, uh, I'm doing um, Cambly after I finish talking to you guys. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm, um, Jen's leaving. Um, yeah, I wear this shirt when I do my Cambly. I don't know why, but I just, I don't have a lot of shirts that fit, actually. So you don't, you not like my shirt, Jason Kirk? Are you making fun of me or? Um, I don't know if those are pot, I don't know, are they pot leaves? I don't think my mom would buy me a shirt with pot leaves on it. <laughs> I don't know. I wish pot was legal here, I'll tell you that. Um, I'm Mark from Casa Grande, Arizona, USA. I enjoy your videos. Hope to see you when I get there. Yeah, look me up, Ron, and I love Arizona. I love Utah and Arizona, two of my favorite states. I've always wanted to go to Sedona. I lived in St. George, Utah for a long time. And Sedona's got those beautiful red mountains and cliffs. And I, I want to go to Sedona sometime. I love the, the high desert. <clears throat> Jason smile at Stanley. The kindness of the Philippine people is a huge draw. I lived in Thailand for four years. The land of smiles is only on the surface from zero to violence in 60 seconds. I didn't know that. Yes, people are very friendly here and helpful. I've had, I told the story in another video, but a couple of years ago when I first bought my motorcycle, I was downtown at night and my motorcycle broke down. It wouldn't start. What happened is the throttle cable had snapped. And I'm stranded there. It's at night. It's like on a Saturday night. Some boy, you know, 20 something year old guy, sees me, you know, trying to start my bike. He comes over, offers to help me, gets a toolkit out from his bike, tries to fix it. He couldn't fix it. He says, well, I know where there's a mechanic. He gets on his bike, rides like, you know, 10 blocks away, finds a mechanic, brings the mechanic back to me. By now it's dark. And they're using their cell phones as light, working on my bike. They take the, the cable out. They got to go back to a shop that's closed to get a cable. They come back. The cable doesn't fit. They go back to get another cable. That cable fits. Finally, like an hour and a half, two hours later, they got my bike fixed. And uh, I'm trying to pay them. They only wanted the money for the cable, which was like a few hundred pesos. And I had to force them to take money. Just for no reason, total stranger. That's the kind of people you got here in the Philippines. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I married a girl from Samar, been happily married for 12 years now. She got her sensitive Friday. Good for you. Good for you. Um, so many guys I know. I'd say... 80% of the guys I know that married a Filipina are in long-term relationships are very happy. I know guys who have been married to the same girl for 20 years, 15 years, 10 years, and they're very happy. Um, so most of it works out. And like I say, if you're a good guy and you know how to treat a woman with respect, like this is old school here, guys. This is not, you know, liberated women. It's like they expect you to take care of them, look after them, protect them, be kind to them. Um, and they'll take care of you. And uh, it's great. You know, if you find the right person, you'll never be happier. If that's what you're looking for. I saw, Richard, I saw uh, that bachelor pad in your compound on Craigslist for rent. Good deal. It's, it, if it's still available, I might rent it if you like it. Me, I always respect people's privacy. You can be a very private person. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you talking about the uh, studio apartment? Yeah, that's rented already. The guy been living there for a few months. Jen did that on her channel. She advertised that on her channel. But it might be coming up available again soon. I don't think he's going to stay there that long. That guy. She was with a girl. She broke up and moved out with a baby and stuff. So that might be available soon. It's a nice little place, though. I think he was, pay, was paying 15000 for it, which is half what I pay. Uh, from Las Vegas. I mean, I love Vegas. I love Las Vegas. I used to take my ex-wife there every weekend for like three years she was from london we go see the show stay in the hotels like on a sunday night you get a room in vegas for like 60 bucks right on the strip hey mark looking great i'm wondering who's the best local phone provider also how's your magic uh working out do you use it off on magic it's not magic jack um cell phone service is great here because in america i was paying like 200 dollars a month for at&t or t-mobile um I pay like, I spend less than $20 a month on my cell phone here. Um, you just get a SIM card, put it in your unlocked phone. Um, we have Smart and we have Globe. I use both. 
Um, probably use Smart more than anything else. Literally, a few dollars a month is what I'm spending on it. Because I usually just use my phone uh, here with the internet. You know, Magic Jack is great. I don't even remember what I'm paying. It's $5 a month, something like that. And you pick your area code. I picked Utah because I used to live there. And so my mother, my friends can call me on my Magic Jack. And my phone rings, even if I'm not here. Just phone, my phone rings like normal. I can talk to them. You do video calls. Um, the good thing is if you're doing banking or credit cards, they want to send you like a, a pen code. They can text it to you with your Magic Jack number from America. But if they, but if they tried to do it to you on my, on my smart or my globe phone number, they've got three numbers on this phone, then it wouldn't go through because it's long distance it's to another country. But it works great for Magic Jack, so I highly recommend it. And you don't need any kind of – it used to be you had to have a little, a little plug that goes in your computer – or in your wall, but now it's all done on your phone. You know, you just register online, and it's really easy to do. Really easy. I highly recommend it. Yeah, um, I've had some run-ins with the cops in America, um, but I've also known some very nice cops in America. Um, I was at a um, what was it? I can't remember the restaurant with my mother a couple of years ago. And we were leaving the restaurant. The parking is like a Sunday, real busy. And we're leaving. Like people were queuing up to get out. People were queuing up for parking spaces. And some guy behind me was tooting his horn, right? Well, there's this off-duty cop, you know, pulling out or pulling in. And he thinks it's me that honked the horn. Gets out, flashes his badge, starts screaming at me, you know, saying he's going to arrest me. I said, dude, it wasn't even me. I didn't honk my horn. And he still wouldn't stop. And... I've had, I, I got pulled over another time. I come back from the hospital. I had a surgery on my side. I had a tumor removed. And I had surgery. I was coming up to the hospital. There's a, to my neighborhood, there's like a, a one mile entrance. It's just through forest, like a one mile entrance to the forest. Then the neighborhood opens up. You're in the neighborhood. <clears throat> the speed limit is 25. I'm going 35. There's a cop there with a the radar. Pulls me over. Gives me a ticket for $250 for going 10 miles an hour through the fucking woods. You know, like not even anybody around, no houses, no kids, nothing, things like that. You know, I, I don't know how many times I got pulled over for nothing, you know, throughout my life. Sometimes they're nice to you. Sometimes they're not. But you don't have that here. You don't have that here. And these people getting shot, that's a whole other story. You know, pulling your guns out. Um, is there a big age gap with your wife like with you? Is there a big age gap with your wife like with Mark? If there is. Aren't you worried she might find a younger guy and get a divorce from you? No, I'm not worried about that at all, man. Yeah, there's a huge age gap. But um, I've never had any woman, I've had lots of relationships that have been married once, that's loved me as much as my wife loves me. And I, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, every minute of every day, her affection is just, sometimes it's overwhelming. She tells me she loves me 100 times a day. Um, and I've never had anybody treat me as good as my wife treats me. Never. Um, and, you know, she'll be sad when I die. And hopefully when I die, she'll find somebody else that will treat her as good as I do. Um, and she doesn't want anybody else. You know, she wants me. She's attracted to me. Um, but, yeah, I'm lucky. I heard if you let your American driver's license expire, it makes it a lot harder to get a full. Yeah, I think you're right, Richard. My mistake, I didn't, I wasn't even watching it. I wasn't even keeping track of it. It was a mistake I made. I think you're probably right about that. <clears throat> so I'm going to probably have to get a fixer to sort it all out, which I know somebody can do it for me. But yeah, so you're right about that. Um, how often and what's your live chat days, times? Um, I was doing them every day at nine o'clock, but that was too much. So if I'm going to do one, I usually do it at nine o'clock, you know, Philippines time. Uh, today I started about 10 minutes later than that. Um, but doing them every day is too much. I don't have that much to say. Um, it all depends on how many people you got 282 people right now watching. And I just answer your questions, your comments and respond to them. But as you can see, my voice is starting to go. That's what usually happens is after, I've been on here for two hours and two and a half hours, so my voice is starting to go. So I'm going to have to sign off here pretty soon. Um, I'm married to a great woman from the Manila, 27 years. There you go. There's a guy been married for, to a Filipino for 27 years. 
uh, Mark Norris. I was stationed in Okinawa in 1982. My Filipino buddy would buy a medium-sized TV and fill. Okay. Um, Yeah, Henry, I've heard that. Don't take her to, to the States. Um, but I know several guys have done that. It's been fine. One guy I interviewed on my channel, he's a tugboat captain, um, married a Filipina. They live in, uh, I think, Alabama. Got three children, very happy. Another guy, a retired police officer, um, lived together in Oklahoma for many years. Now they live in the Philippines. Um but yeah, it can happen. I know a guy that married a girl, went to Australia. She left him. Um, actually, two guys that happened to them. But both of these guys, I can see why she would leave them. I don't blame the girl. That's all I'm going to say about that. So um, it depends on the relationship. Like in America, I think like what, 60% of marriages end in divorce anyway. So it could end up divorce, you know, doesn't matter if she's, you know, young or old or whatever. But um and the thing is, most of these girls don't want to go to America. They like the Philippines. And most of the men, once they live in the Philippines, they don't want to go back to wherever they're from either. So it's usually a mute point. Mark, did you get back? Which brand is required? And did you get boosters? Yeah. Um, yeah, Hero. I got, um, you know, I didn't, you don't get a choice here. You get whatever is available at the time. I got the Cinevac, two doses, and I was fine. No problems. Didn't make me sick or anything. And then I got the booster. I think I got Moderna. And then also in 2020, January 2020, I had COVID. I was sick for two months. Didn't go to the hospital or anything, but I was very sick for two months. So I feel like I'm pretty well protected now from it. Um, if you're over 66 and have a child or adopt a child, your social security goes up 50%. Take birth certificate and go to the office and renew it. Yeah, well, um, we're not, I don't want to say we're trying, we're not not trying to have a child, put it that way. If it happens, it happens. You know, I got two children. I told Jen, if we get pregnant, that's great. I'll be happy about it. But if we don't, she's got to accept that. Um, as far as adoption in the Philippines, I think the law says if you're over 50, you're not allowed to adopt. So I don't think we could adopt a child. But if it happens, it happens, you know. But uh, that's good. I knew that, though, about the Social Security. That would be great. I'd love to have my Social Security doubled. White Snake, Fleetwood Mac. Uh, I'll tell you a story. My ex-wife dated the lead singer of White Snake back in the 70s. Yeah, got lucky um. Steve, uh, my wife and I enjoy your channel on a regular basis. Thanks for having your channel. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it, man. Journey, Rush, yeah. Um, what was another one? Um, REO Speedwagon, um, Green's Clearwater Revival, Jim Croce. Green's in San Francisco. Are the ferries? Yeah, the Reddit, ferries are running back and forth. Yeah, I see them all the time right out here. Yep. I took a ferry from uh, from Manila to uh, Dimbagetti when I bought my motorcycle. Thank you so much. USA, nice. I was stationed in Okinawa in 1982. A Filipino buddy of mine would buy a small TV at the RPX and fill it up full of watches. He bribed a guard with 50 bucks and made a killing selling those watches. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Why can't you just bring the watches in? Is it illegal to bring the watches in? Yeah. Um, yeah. Rolling Stones, yeah. Rolling Stones, yeah. Um, they're still playing today. It's amazing. Those guys are even alive. Exactly right. Mystery, you're Filipino. They'll leave you. You go lucky. Yeah. You, uh, you got to watch your P's and Q's if you got a Filipino wife or girlfriend. I mean, don't raise your voice to them. Don't swear. Even if you're not, not, if you, I found I get in trouble if I'm swearing at my computer, you know, so no swearing, no swearing allowed, you know. Um, guys that come here in the Philippines and are, 
withdrawing Social Security and have a child here, should remember that the child is entitled to a monthly check also until the age of 18. Yeah, that's good to know. Uh, Tony, I don't think there's a big wave of tourists, especially China's giving their nationals a hard time to get out of China's border. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's going on in China. I talked to people from China yesterday, as a matter of fact, on tutoring, but they didn't say anything about coming here. Do I have to get Magic Jack before I leave the U.S. for it to work? No. No, I did mine here. I did it all here, and it was fine. You just sign up for it online, and you decide, you tell them what area code you want in America. You can choose any area code, and that's your number. It's really easy. But I keep my Google of USA cell phone plan and fill when I come to the, yeah, of course. Yeah, you can do that. You pay, you know, pay more money to use that. I kept T-Mobile when I first came here, but then after six months, they de they turned off my account because you have to go back to America to renew it. Plus, I was paying a fortune for my T-Mobile. And then I realized that I could use my phone here with a SIM card, you know, Philippine SIM card for a tiny fraction of what I was paying for T-Mobile. So it made no sense to keep it. He likes my shirt. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's funny, uh, Jason, when she bought me this shirt, God, 10 years ago, and uh, as a present for a Christmas present, I was in Kentucky, living in Kentucky, selling cars, so there was no way I was ever going to wear this shirt in Kentucky, never. And then I got back on ships, and I, I wear it occasionally on cruise ships. And then I came here, and now I wear it, whenever I'm doing my, my, my Cambly tutoring, I always wear it. And uh, I have a lot of compliments on it. People like my shirt, and they recognize me. I'll be at the mall and some guy will recognize me because of the shirt and come over and say, hey, I watch your channel and see you. And I recognize that shirt. So it's been good luck. So thank you for the shirt. Um, Marcos, enjoy your channel. You're the first blogger in the Philippines I discovered. Glad you're well. Thank you so much. There's a lot of good bloggers in the Philippines now. I saw Frank Zappa and Captain Beefheart at the Winter Fund in San Francisco. Wow, lucky you. I like Frank Zappa. He died of a... I think it was colon cancer, prostate cancer, didn't he? I like Frank Zappa. Yellow Snow, remember that song? Yeah, get a pool tail. That's a good idea. Yeah, I use I used to use Skype too, um, and it's not very expensive. But you have to pay for Skype, and uh, you know you you run out of minutes, and sometimes they expire. But with Magic Jack, like every month, I call every one of my credit cards and get the automated thing to make sure I know exactly what my balance is, what my payment is, and I do that every month. And I use Magic Jack for that. And it's so easy. This works great. It's just like having a – it's like I was back in America. It's as simple as that. You don't have to dial any special numbers or anything. Um, yeah, I, I think – well, I think funerals are a big ripoff, man. I think they're a ripoff in America anywhere. If I had my choice, you could – Wrap me in a in a canvas bag, put a lead weight in, it, drop me in the ocean. That's fine with me, or or uh, have me uh, cremated. But I don't think anybody, unless you're some famous, wonderful person, deserves to have like a headstone, you know, put over your body and like mark where you were grave. Take up, you know, space in a graveyard forever. I mean, I think it's a waste. So I don't. I donate my body to science, you know, something like that. But. I don't care what they do with me. When I'm dead, I, I can care less. I don't want a funeral. I don't want any kind of ceremony. I don't want Jen to spend one penny on my death. Nothing. And uh, that's the way I feel about it. Um, thank you so much for that. You're sweet. I got lots of plants. You don't see there's a plant, big plant right there. Uh, plant right here. Um. In that corner is a big plant. In that corner is a big plant. You should see the deck. Jen's got our deck covered in plants. So we got lots of plants. But yeah, I like to get more plants. It's very sunny here. So you can put plants anywhere. Um, good question. Uh, best beach towns near you. Um, I got a beautiful beach right behind my house here. Um, I think you have to go. There's a place called uh, Sugar Beach. It's about 40 miles from here. It's supposed to be really nice. I haven't been there yet. 
Um, if you want the white sand, you know, beaches that Philippines is famous for, you got to go to another island, probably like Palawan. I hear it's spectacular there. I've never been there yet. But uh, there's beautiful beaches in the Philippines. They say, they say Palawan is the most beautiful island in the world. I haven't been there yet, but I mean, I want to go there. Uh, wife and I have lived in Korea, Virginia, Korea, Virginia, Germany, and now Alabama. And we are doing great. Maybe Korea again after this closure to the Philippines. Yeah, I've never been to Korea except for I've been to the airport there when I flew here, but I've heard good things about it. I talk to people in Korea all the time on my Cambly. Um, my mother had me when she was 19 years old, and she's doing great. She uh, plays tennis. She plays bridge. She has lots of friends. She's an astrologer. Um, she used to ride a bike. She's in great health. Plays pickleball. But she's in phenomenal health. Phenomenal. Rolling Stones. Oh, yeah. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Can't forget them. I love Tom. But he passed away, too, didn't he, not long ago? Saw Frank Zappa in 1977. Halloween show at the Palladium. Wow. How lucky are you? I worked for Ozzy Osbourne one time when he was with Black Sabbath. It was, uh, I was in the truss above the stage running Spotlight. And there were so many people smoking pot at the, at the concert that I got high in the running Spotlight for Ozzy Osbourne. <clears throat> oh, yeah, of course. It, there's no point even mentioning the Beatles, you know, because they're obviously there. But they, they broke up. When did they break up? It was in the early 70s, right? Really early 70s? I can't remember when they broke up. Let's see. Yeah, lots of fresh fruit here. Lots of fresh fruit everywhere. It drops from the, a lot of the fruit grows in the trees here. We've got fruit trees here in our yard. Deep purple, Rod Stewart, yeah. So many. Yeah, lots of fruits and veggies. Um, Got pulled over by the LAPD for speeding. Turns out he was a Marine and was in Dumaguete to help recover the bodies of 13 U.S. Marines on board the Chinook that crashed off the coast of Dua. I didn't even hear about that. Wow. Did he let you go? That's nice he let you go. Um, when I was in California um, years and years ago, I used to run a hotel when I got out of the Navy. And I remember one time the cops brought one of my tenants. This guy was a regular drinker. He'd get drunk and go get arrested. And they, they picked him up. He's in the back of the police car. He's, you know, halfway passed out. And they bring him home. They gave him his beer. He had like four beers left. They let him keep his beer and they helped him get to his apartment. You know, they were like that. We got pulled over one time. Again, this is in the 70s in California. We had a bong with us, some Thai stick and uh, some pot and some beer. They poured out our open beers. We weren't drunk yet, you know. They poured out our open beers. They gave us back the, the, the full ones. They took the pot, they took the bong and emptied it out and they let us go. So anyway, uh, saw McCarthy and Ringo at Dodger Stadium a few years back, the Beatles as they exist today, wow. No. You know, it's a whole different number, Harry. It's a whole different number. You just choose um, you choose a um, area code. But yeah, it's a whole different number. So you'll have, if you come here, Harry, if you get, say, um, smart, you get a smart SIM card or a globe SIM card, you'll have that phone number. That'll be your Philippine phone number. It usually starts with like a 6-9 area code. And Magic Jack would be whatever area code you choose from whatever city, just like you're in America. Um, and you can call... 1-800 numbers, any number you want, you can use your magic check for that. But you, you could have, so like on my phone now, I've got three phone numbers. I've got a globe number, a smart number, and my magic jack number. And I, But I usually a lot of times I use um, Facebook Messenger more than anything else for my family and friends and stuff. That's who I call it with. Um, my wife and I are flying over uh, February 14th in Japan. We have not been back for two years. Fingers crossed, nothing changes before next week. Thanks for the content. You're welcome, man. I hope I hope to get to meet you someday.
Um, BJ Johnson, I remember you saying that you do everything with your phone. Do you use Wi-Fi with your phone? Are you able to get unlimited minutes in the Philippines? Um, I use, uh, usually like I'm, I'm online, so it's all, I'm not paying anything extra when I'm making phone calls or whatever I'm doing on my phone. Um, but no, you, you top your phone up here. It's instead of having a plan, like unlimited minutes, you just pay something, you go into it. You can buy, you can get, they call it load. You can buy load anywhere here. Any sorry, sorry store, convenience store, they sell everywhere. And so you walk in, you say, um, I want to get 300 pesos of load, which is $6. You give them that and uh, they punch in your phone number, you get a text, boom, you've got it. It's instant. And then you can take that $6 and you can decide how you want to use it. There's like all these choices like text, data, phone, unlimited, whatever, you know how many gigabytes you can, there's all these choices. You choose the one you want and it might only be like 50 pesos. So you use 50 pesos and save the rest for another day. You can do that. But um, I find it very convenient once I got used to it. You're not wasting any money. That's a great thing. You're not wasting any money on it. Um, okay, this is this is the same thing that happened to me with, um, with uh, my uh, T-Mobile. I'll be right back, guys. Uh, I'll be gone for two minutes. Hold on. Sorry, I'm back. Let's see here. Um, is there any way to travel to the Philippines from places like Vietnam via ocean ship? Good question. Um, I would think there's got to be. There's just boats coming back and forth from there. Um, but I, I don't really know that. You'd have to Google that or something. Wait, we're going to... Uh, do you know why they kept you awake on a ventilator with COVID? They put you into a deep sleep if they uh, ventilate you, man. That one was terrifying less than the surrender. Um, well, no, what it was is when I woke up from surgery. Have you ever had surgery? It's kind of a weird thing, by the way. Um, I was under, I think for like 16 hours, they operated on me. And they put the mask on you, you go to sleep. But the weird thing is, is it's like, boom, you wake back up. It's like that time doesn't exist. You go to sleep, you wake up. It's instant, instant. And all that time is gone. And then they put you in recovery, but you're still on the ventilator and you're paralyzed. So you're awake, conscious, laying there, you know, and you can't move a finger and it's breathing for you. <laughs> and since I'm a scuba diver, it's very similar to breathing with a regulator, except for with a regulator, you decide when you want to breathe. With a ventilator, it breathes for you. But it's, I just found it frightening. Plus, my father died, you know, on a ventilator. And I watched him die. I'm the one that turned off the, or decided to end the life support. And it's just terrifying. I mean, I hate having my body paralyzed. And I kept, when I could finally move my arm, I remember going like this to the nurse, take it out. And she said, oh, another half an hour. And then, of course, you're in the, you're in the intensive care unit. I had big tubes in my chest, a big needle sticking in my neck. You know, like a sewing, like a knitting needle on my neck. 
um, catheter, just horrible. I mean, absolutely horrible. And I don't know, I just hated it. I mean, I would rather die than do that again. So anyway, enough about that. Um, I bought a fake Rolex in US for $50 and a guy offered me 500. I told him it was a fake and, I, and what I paid for and he didn't care. I bought it from Street Hustler in New Orleans about 20 years ago. Good for you. Yeah. Um, I used to buy those fake watches um, when I was in Thailand and where else? Um, Turkey. They sold a lot of them in Turkey. You get the, there's different qualities of those. You can get the, um, um, the, the uh, what do they call them? The Swiss made ones. There's like Swiss movement and they're really good watches. But, you know, instead of paying, like, say you buy a Rolex, it's going to cost $20,000. You can get one for, say, 200 you know, that's a really good watch. It's not a Rolex, but it's a really good watch. Um, but yeah, you know, so yeah, I know what you're talking about. When I was on the cruise ship um, years ago, I was on Sea Goddess. This is very rich people like Donald Trump, Leona Helmsley, people like that cruise on the ship. And they would come to me. I was a cruise director. And I forget where we were, somewhere in Asia. And there was a lot of these fake watches there. And they come up and say, hey, Mark, uh, I give you some money. Can you buy a Rolex for me and buy me this? And they wanted me to buy these fake watches. They didn't want anybody to see them buying them. And I buy them. So it was for my nephew. It's for my cousin. But I knew it was for them. And so I'd go and buy these watches. And they'd pay me extra. I'd make some extra money selling fake watches to the passengers and, you know, buying, basically buying them for them, you know. Let's see. Um, boom, boom, boom. Uh, And it's a little slow again. Um, Mark McCuffin. Why not? It's still a good place to sit and have a cold beer and watch traffic go by. Yeah, I go to Why Not every once in a while. I like their pizza down there. No, I haven't paid my funeral expenses. No. I'm not going to have a funeral. Um, good for you, Kenya. My son is an LAPD motor stop. I got away several times with other city agencies. They somehow are able to verify my son as an officer with LAPD and motors guys knows him. Well, you know, that's great, Henry, that you get away with it. But is that really fair that, you know, just because your son is an LAPD officer that you can get away with, you know, something that, that someone else would get a, get a ticket and have to pay two or $300 for? Um, you know, I know the cops, like if another cop pulls over another cop or pulls over someone whose family is a cop, they let them go. So it's really not fair, you know, when you think about it. Um, I found with cops, generally, if you're polite to them, a lot of times, if you're not doing anything too serious, they'll let you go. But we don't have that problem here in the Philippines. They're really not doing that. And then when you do get a ticket, the, the fines are minuscule, you know, like $5. Whereas in America, you know, you, you make a... a you roll through a stop sign at three o'clock in the morning. There's not another car for 20 miles. The cop sees you. You get a ticket for like $250. So, yeah, anyway, enough about that. Good morning, Yusuf. Nice to see you. I don't know, man. I, I have no idea what the square footage is. It's huge, though. I mean, three big bedrooms, two, two CR, two bathrooms, huge deck, and then this great room here. Then there's also a big living room back there you can't see. There's another living room. That's where we watch TV and everything. That's back there. Yeah, lots of room. I don't know what you're talking about there. No idea. So I really like it when you and We don't do too many videos together, and I'll tell you why. The trolls really, really uh, attack us. Like the trolls really attack us when we do that. So, and it upsets Jen a lot. Uh, when I first came over there, do I need a power converter? Good question, Mark. Very good question. No, you don't. It's a regular power. The regular, um, it's a regular 110, the same alloy you'd have in America, but they don't have the ground on there. So there's no ground. Um, yeah, the same plug, everything. So that's another thing about the Philippines. I should have mentioned that before, Mark. Um, that's another great thing is you don't need to convert your, uh, if you're from America, you can use your regular plug, no problem. 
And they also have um, some of the plugs here are where they can be 220 or 110. So it depends on whatever you have. It, it'll, it'll accept both. You know, so that's good, too. Um, I moved my childhood phone number to Magic Jack after my mom died. You can do that as well as just choosing your number. Okay, there's, that's good to know. Mr. Ben says you can, you, you can use your regular phone and move it to your Magic I didn't know that, Ben. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's really useful information. Because, you know, a lot of guys have the same phone number. You want to keep that phone number because all your friends have that number. And if you can move that to Magic Jack, that's great. Because I think a lot of people, they keep their AT&T plan or, or T-Mobile plan because everybody knows that number. and They don't want to get a new number, change it on their credit cards and all their bills and everything like that. But if you can do that, Ben, that's great. I wish I'd known that. You've gone through tough times. I just want to say thanks. Hey, my pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Um, all I can say, Jason, is, you know, if you guys have watched my channel, you know my story. I was in a very, very dark place when I came here. I was like, you know, in a corner, boxed in, no hope of anything. I was really, really in a bad place. And I came here just, I mean, bought a one-way ticket, not knowing. Well, I brought beef jerky with me because I couldn't buy food. I mean, it was really a bad place. And then I get here, and it took a couple of weeks, and all of a sudden it was like a, a, a bad spell had been broken. Like a dark cloud just blew all over my head. It was gone. The sun came out. And it's been like that ever since. It just keeps getting better and better and better. Jen and I were talking about it last night, like from just the time we've been together, which is uh, all going on two years now. And it just keeps getting better. We were talking about what it was like when we first met, when our first apartment, we've been, this is our third apartment we've been lived in together. And it just keeps getting better. Everything keeps getting better in our lives. And I'm hoping it keeps doing that till I die. But yeah, you know, to don't give up. If you can come here, come here and, you know, and try it out. You know, maybe your life will change too. <laughs> yeah, it does take a while. I'll tell you, Henry, when I worked on cruise ships, I, the last ships I worked on were the big mega ships. I take out the biggest, whatever the newest carnival ship was, newest Royal Caribbean ship, I'd set them up and take those ships out. And I'd be doing like, I was doing our auctions back then. So I'd be, my my event would be in like the back lounge. And I'd be in my cab, would be the other the other end of the ship. And so I'd get to the, there to set, I'd get to work to set up and I'd forget my glasses or forget my pen or forget something. I'd have to walk all the way back and, you know, it's 16 floor ship. And it's always going to take me 30 minutes to go back to my cabin and get what I forgot. So, this is nothing compared to what it was like on a ship. Um, this house is in Bacong, um, very close to Valencia, very close to Dumaguete. I can be at the mall in Dumaguete in 10 minutes. I can be in Valencia in 10 minutes. Uh, so it's very centrally located, really right on a beautiful beach here. I, well, I swim every day. I just walk out my backyard, go swimming. Um, the house is about a kilometer from the main highway, national highway, so it's quiet. You don't hear any cars going by. It's just great here. I mean, it's paradise. I'm really lucky to have it. Is it generally just as comfortable there than it would be in the Western world in the house, I mean? Oh, yeah, of course it is. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I've got a big refrigerator. I've got hot water. I mean... I don't have a dishwasher. They don't use those here. we got a washer. We have our own washer. We don't have a dryer. We hang our clothes out on a line, which is nice. People, Jen likes doing that. Um, but, yeah, got a stove, got an oven, microwave, you know, everything. So it's good. Ocean ships travel overseas. And then in the, in the 80s, there used to be one from Philippines to the United States. It took a month to make the travel. Really? Wow. Well, um, yeah, the ship that we're trying to buy, we're going to do a nonstop, not nonstop, but continuous world cruise. The ship will always be sailing around the world. So wherever you get on, if you just stay on long enough, you'll end up back where you started. That's our plan. It's not hard. I've got, I had a roller skating rink with floors as big as this. We've got a special, one of those long push brooms, really easy to clean, no big deal. Rapid test will go bad after 30, 30 degrees. Okay, I didn't know that. 
do cruise ships uh, staff get discounts for family? One cruise I was on and quite a few Filipino passengers, it was a Princess Baltic cruise. Yeah, you do. Depends on your rank and your position, but you usually get discounts. Also, um, the last ship I was on, a Royal Caribbean ship, they used to send us the staff. I was a department head. I get emails saying, oh, there's a deal on a cruise out of Florida for family, friends and family. And so you could you could forward that to your friends and family and say, hey, you know, you want to go on this cruise out of Fort Lauderdale next week, you can get it for half the price. I got a deal one time on a princess ship for my mother and sister, both of them together, for $500. Um, everything included. They had a balcony suite, 10-day cruise. They couldn't believe it. I said, yeah, it's $500, a, a voucher that I got from a friend of mine that worked at Princess. And my sister's going, it's got to be a scam. It's got to be a scam. I said, no, it's not a scam. And so she got the voucher and went online, made the reservation, got on the ship. thinking they're going to get some crappy little inside cabin suite with a balcony and everything. They couldn't believe it. 500 bucks for two people, not for one. But yeah, you do get discounts. I used to took, I brought my wife and daughter on when she was a baby many years ago on a carnival ship for free. And a lot of the officers, they can bring their family on board for so many weeks out of their contract. No, I don't want. I don't want to live in maid. We, we like our privacy. I wouldn't want a maid. Jen, you know, Jen was a maid before I met her. She was a maid, so she's really fastidious about how she keeps the place clean. Like she cleans everything all the time, so she keeps it spotless here. And I mean, she doesn't work, so she. It doesn't take long. You know, we're not messy people, so it's no big deal. Hi, Mark. Um, and watching before I moved over here. Um, we built a 32,000 square foot house. Wow, good for you. That's a big house. Oh, my bracelet. This is a, that's a John Hardy silver, um, handmade woven. This is a gift from a cruise director. Um, when I was working on a carnival ship as art director, um, I had targets. And if I hit the target um, sales wise, the cruise director and the hotel director would get a bonus. And I was on that ship for like four months, and every single week I hit my target, he got a bonus. So he brought me this as a gift. I've had this for about over 20 years. And it's great, I like it, thank you. Um, spending the kids' inheritance in the Philippines. I may, maybe you can interview me I, I day, one day, uh, rumors being posted on certain channels that I'm a failure loser, coward, or look up for join your channel. I think I've heard of your channel, spending, spending the inheritance of the Philippines. Send me an email. We can try and work something out. I'll interview you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, before me, obviously. She also dated, um, I didn't know the guy's name. I just knew he was a lead singer of Whitesnake. Um, she also dated some guy. They have in, in uh, England, uh, like Ari Quibb and the Blue Angels, they call them the Red Arrows, I think. And this guy, when she was dating my ex-wife, when she was young, in her 20s, I guess, uh, would pick her up in a helicopter. So how she ended up with me, I don't know. But uh, she dated some pretty pretty impressive guys before she met me. Um, no news on that. As far as I know, um, you have to have uh, be vaccinated. You have to have proof of that to come here. There's no exception. As a matter of fact, the law right now, if you're an expat in the Philippines and you are not vaccinated, you have to stay in your house unless you get a special permission to go shopping. And they can technically arrest you, put you in jail. They're not doing that, but that's basically the, the law here. Oh, those comments were, they were, okay, yeah, well, I'm not going to say the name of my ex-wife, and uh, I don't know if she slept with him or not. I just said she went out with him. I didn't say she slept with him. Um, yeah, I haven't had any trouble with uh, surges here, but we do have a surge protector on the, on the TV and on the refrigerator. But my computer, since it's, you know, battery charged, you know, I have never had a problem with that. Use Google Voice in the Philippines, not Google. 
FI Google, FI will screw up, screw you up if you use it in a foreign country. Go with Google Voice. Okay, good to know. What is your best guess for make a hundred thousand dollars last in the Philippines? Keep up the great videos. Well, David, um, congratulations, you got a hundred thousand um, dollars. I never had that much money in my whole life. Um, leave your money where it is. Uh, hopefully, it's earning interest somewhere, and I don't know however you got it invested, and only spend what you need. You know, when you come over here. Um, if you don't have social security, you don't have a pension. In addition to that lump sum, um, find a way to make some money online, like, you know, tutor English, or there's a thousand things you can do online to make, make a, a couple hundred bucks a week and kind of use that as your main money. Um, don't go buying yourself a house here. Don't go, go buy some girl a house. Don't support some girl's family, you know, just use it as you need it, you know, just only draw from that money. That's what you really need. That's my advice. You know, just because you got a hundred thousand doesn't mean you got to spend a hundred thousand. Um, if you're moving over here, you know, buy buy a car, buy um, a motorbike, pay cash for it. Um, that's all I can really say. You know, um, but don't buy property or just rent. Just rent. The Google cancel after six months. I heard it's actually not true. I don't see why they would cancel after six months. It doesn't make any sense because Google is a worldwide company, you know. That's who I work for, my YouTube channel. This is through Google. That's who pays me. Uh, there, I think you have an extra zero on your square footage of your house. 32,000 square feet, maybe 3,200. Yeah, 32,000 square feet. That's a big place, man. My roller skating rink was only like 20,000 square feet. Can you interview Ned? Who's Ned? Uh, my lucky bill. We don't. Ever since the typhoon, Richard, we quit using the um, the uh, AC. Like we were turned on the AC at night only, just at night in our bedroom. It's just in the bedroom. And then with the typhoon, we didn't have power for ten days, so we just and didn't even have a fan. We just left the windows open, and we realized, hey, we're we're not hot. And now with a fan, that's enough. And so. It went from sixty dollars a month down to like um, less than twenty dollars a month for electricity for this place. That's what we spend. Um, our, we're lucky. Like uh, my landlord is a very wealthy man. He did everything right. So we have like uh, pillow top American style mattresses that are like sleeping on a cloud. I couldn't believe how good they were when I got here, but you're right. The other places I lived is basically it was a foam mattress, you know, it was okay, but um, not the best, but here we got, we got both bedrooms. We got really nice mattresses. Um, my Filipino brother-in-law came to the States very broke. He got a job on a huge ship cargo. I think he now works in engineering and has three gold stripes on his uniform. What rank is that? Um, they don't call it, they don't have ranks. Like uh, there's captain, but uh, everybody else down from like I was three stripes too on a ship. You just they just call it three stripes. You're two stripes, you're one stripe. They don't they don't have a rank. At least on cruise ships they don't. Except with the exception of captain, chief engineer, but they don't uh, they don't have ranks. But three stripes three stripes is pretty high up. Mark, you mentioned that your rent was like $600 a month. Can you give me an average total for rent, utilities, food, gas, et cetera? Um, I don't know, probably if I, 600 for rent, you know, 20 for electricity. Food, we spend probably $400 a month on food. Food's expensive. Um, so all, all in all, you know, I'm spending, you know, less than 2000 a month. Hey, Mark, it's cold out here in New York City, 28 degrees. Can't wait to visit the Philippines. Hopefully, in the month of July, I'll be the best uh, you and your wife. Thanks. Hope to look, you, hope to see you when you come here. Yeah, the weather here is really consistent. Um, it's usually in the mid-80s here. I mean, usually, like where I'm at right now, the ocean temperature stays the same. Um, 
nice breeze. I mean, the weather, the weather here is better than Florida. I can tell you that. I lived in Florida. Um, I find it just great here. The weather, blue skies every day, clean air where I live. You know, you go in the city, yeah, you're going to have the cars and stuff, but where I'm at, because you're on an island, it's got fresh air blowing from every direction. So it's beautiful here. Many thanks. You're welcome. Golden, Colorado. I used to live, hey, Rick, I used to live in Golden, Colorado. I was the artistic director and the um, stage manager of the Golden, um, Golden something, what was it? Heritage Square, Heritage Square Opera House. The Heritage Square Opera House. I was the, uh, used to run the lights and sound and design the sets for there. It was a great, great uh, little theater there. Golden, Colorado. I lived there. And then I left there and was the uh, stage manager of the, I um, can't remember what it was called. It was a dinner theater downtown. This is going back 30 years. A dinner theater in Denver, Colorado. Called, it was like a barn with a stage that goes up and down. But yeah, I love Golden, Colorado. Beautiful. Uh, COVID vaccines are now fully FDA approved. Why are people still afraid vaccines are the best way to return to normal? I've had no trouble with them at all. I mean, everybody I know that's gotten a vaccine has had no problem. Um, how effective they are, we'll see. Yeah, they're saying that um, this Omicron, people that are vaccinated, people that have had COVID before are still getting Omicron, but they're not getting very sick. I know a lot of people have gotten this Omnicon and it's like a mild annoyance for a few days. It's like, you know, hardly any worse than a common cold for the people I've talked to. Jen and I may have had it ourselves. She was feeling down last week, you know, and it wasn't coughing and sneezing and stuffy nose and a headache and a little tired and better in two days. So I don't know. Uh, how's Jen uh, doing? Uh, Jill up her YouTube channel. She's doing okay. She's so talented. But I've got to push her to put out videos. She just is not that, you know, dedicated to it. But um, when she does one, she knows how to edit and everything. You know, and she helps me with my channel. But she's really good at it. But it's hard for her to find girls that will get interviewed because they're shy or their English isn't good enough. But, yeah, you know, if she would just put a little more effort into it, I think she could do really well. Like, look at Filipina P. She's making... That girl's making like a hundred grand a year off her YouTube channel. Um, no mosquitoes, no problem at all. Don't even look at, think about them. No, they don't. So I used to work at dinner theaters. I worked at dinner theaters all over America as stage manager and actor. And I used to love them, but they don't, they're dying out in America too. There are very few of them left. Um, no, nothing like that here. Nothing. Robert Wilson, terrible here. Foreigners wearing anti-vax t-shirts in Duma. It is, it's an insult. I agree with you, Robert, 100%. Um, I knew a guy, I'm not going to say his name, kind of a friend of mine, and he was walking around, big yellow shirt on it, you know, about, no, don't take the vaccine. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not vaccinated. It's all a scam, blah, blah, blah. No mask, walking around at the market on Sunday. And when locals see that, they say, oh, there's a foreigner. That's why we've got COVID. Guys like that. He's the reason my grandmother died, that guy. And it makes us all look bad. You know, we're, it's not my country. We're in another country. And the law is the law here. So if the country is, says you have to wear a mask, you have to wear a mask. You have to get vaccinated, you have to get vaccinated. If you don't like it, leave. Go someplace else. But that's the law. This, I'm a guest in this country. And for somebody to do that, it's insulting to the locals. It make, imagine if someone from the Philippines came to America and said, well, I'm not going to follow your law. I'll do whatever I want to do because I'm a Filipino. You'd throw them in jail. Well, you know, it's the same thing here. You know, you follow the laws. And uh, this guy, he was hanging out with another friend of mine, also not vaccinated. But that guy was at least keeping a low profile about it. Well, anyway, the one guy died, got Kobe's dead. He was in great health. He died of COVID. So anyway, enough about that. Um, no, it's easy. You can live on $2,000, $1,200 a month here. You have an apartment. It's going to cost you, say, $300 a month. Um, spend another $300 a month on food. 
the rest of it, whatever you want to spend it on, you know? So yeah, easy. You know, you're not going to live like I, I, I'm, I'm spending like $1,600 right now, but so I'm usually less than that, but around 1600 look where I'm living and I'm married. I got a wife too. So that's an expense too. Let's see. Um, Yeah, they say, yeah, it depends on your lifestyle, you know, and also if you're by yourself and if you're um, got a girlfriend living with you, you know, there's guys here like Paul, my friend Paul was, and May were living on $1,000 a month. They did an experiment to see if they could live on 1000 a month, and they did. So, um, you know, we we don't worry about what we spend. It's like we go to the grocery store. I don't say we can't afford that. Jen, Jen buys whatever she wants to buy. I buy whatever I want to buy. Um, you know, we go out to dinner at least three or four times a week. Um, you know, if uh, Jen's motorbike needs a repair, mine needs a repair, we don't worry about it. But, you know, we're living for, uh, you know, well under $2,000 a month for us, you know, every month. So that's what we're doing. There you go. Chemo retired military plan. There you go. That's something to look into. Um, I don't really have a favorite month because they're all the same. I like the rainy season, actually. I like it when it rains, you know. Um, we're just getting out of that, but it would rain, you know, good hard rain every other day or sometimes every day, but it only lasts for an hour or two, and then the sun comes out and it freshens everything up. So, you know, it's. I think um, April and May are the hottest months, so they're probably my least favorite. But the rest of the year is the same. It's just very consistent. Like, I was in Miami in 2017 for seven weeks living on the beach there. And in January, it was too cold to swim in the ocean, too cold. And here, the ocean's like I got right now, and the ocean's a perfect temperature for swimming, not too hot, not too cold. And it's like that year round, it's the same. Um, Jen's channel is called Every Woman Has a Story. Every Woman Has a Story, Mine's Every Man Has a Story. I, I don't have the money to buy a condo, first of all. And second, you know, why would I – say I had $50,000 laying around. I could buy a house and live or a condo and live in that condo. It wouldn't be as nice as this. And my $50,000 is gone. Where if I had $50,000 now, I would invest it and use it as I need it and spend $600 a month for this place and have that $50,000 for if I needed it. So it makes no sense to me. Uh, Mark North, my only worry about visiting the Philippines is the heat. I'm 60 and can't handle hot weather like I used to. Did you have a hard time adjusting? Um, I might go to Baggio or Tag Tag Tagate is, is cooler. Also, Valencia. You can go to Valencia up on the mountain here 10 minutes from here, and it's 10 degrees cooler. That's where I lived when I first moved here. You don't even need air conditioning or a fan up there. Um, but no, it doesn't bother me at all. It's like you have to decide, like, you know, some people hate winters, like the snow and the cold more than the heat. But, no, the heat doesn't bother me at all. I mean, at all. Not at all. I don't even think about it. Um, Richard, I heard Big Rock Apartments quality went way down. Is the owner having finance problems? Did the turn into a drunk? I heard power and water outages and dirty pool. Um, I moved, I met the owner of that place, Thomas, before he even built it. I knew him before that. And I was one of the very first people, me and Paul were some of the very first people to move in there. And he had all these promises about what they were going to have, like they're going to have a laundry there and they're going to have a sorry, sorry store there and parties and all this stuff. And the big thing was a generator. They were going to have a generator that after 10 minutes, the power goes out. And up there in Valencia, the power goes out more often than it does here. And they were going to say the power was going to, the general was going to kick on 10 minutes after the power went out. He never did that. Um, he's just a rude guy. He was not very nice to the tenants, didn't care about the tenants. There was an example. This one guy uh, moved in there because Paul and I were living there. And he rented uh, number one, the first apartment by the pool. He paid a year in advance, cash, a year in advance, went back to Seattle. COVID happened. He got sucked in America, right? And so, um, the apartment was empty for a year. Then he rented it for another year, paid it in advance. His girlfriend 
our fiance moved into that apartment for, he had like uh, one month left on his lease and she was in town from another island. So she stayed there for not even uh, a month, right? But while she was there, the gas ran out, of the, the propane ran out. And she asked the owner, because all these other people had moved out. So there's all these empty apartments. They've all got propane canisters. And she asked the owner, you think you could give us a propane from the apartment next door and switch it so we could have gas just for the final week we're here so we don't have to buy a whole other can of propane? He wouldn't do it. The guy had paid two years in advance cash, and he wouldn't give him some free propane from an apartment that's just sitting there not being used. So that's the reason that people moved out there. I mean, you got to treat people nice here because there's lots of places to live. And they were nice apartments, um, nice view of the mountain if you had the right apartment, um, nice amenities. You know, they're well, you know, good things in there. But, yeah, that's a reason that people don't like there. They'd rather go to Dulce Vita is older, but they treat you better over there. Um, yeah, it is a long live stream, isn't it? Three hours. <laughs> I should get off here. Yeah, it is easy. Um, Lee, um, it's easy to get your testosterone replacement therapy. Can you buy it over the counter? How expensive? Um, I don't buy it over the counter. I'm going to actually check tomorrow down at uh, Mercury Drug downtown, see if they have it. If I buy mine online at Lasada or Shopee, they both have it. <sighs> I'm trying to think of the price. I think it's like, $15, $20 for three vials, something like that, delivered. I think that's about what it is. I don't remember. Something like that. It's cheap, though. And you buy your hypodermic needles at the uh, pharmacy. Uh, which entertainers were the easiest and most difficult to work with? Um, well, I worked for Prince one time, setting up his stage uh, in Denver, Colorado. It was where the concert was. It was back in the 80s. And uh, I didn't even know who the guy was. I didn't even heard of him. And I was on the stage for you know, like an hour before the concert. And he's got all these racks to hold his guitars. And one of the guitars, was not, the clip was not in the neck. It was out of the clip. And I just reached over and put the neck in the clip so the guitar wouldn't fall out. I hear this voice behind me. says, don't touch my guitars, man. I said, what? I turn around. I don't see anybody. And then I look down. There's Prince. He's only like five foot tall. I said, well, it's coming out of the clip. I said, well, don't touch my guitars, man. It's okay, cool. But he was a real jerk. You know, I didn't like him. Um, you can't find Hormel chili here, man. I they used to have it, but they haven't had it in a long time. I like that chili too. Uh, I lived my entire life in Pacific Northwest near Seattle, and I can handle the heat uh, here better than a lot of Filipinos. Yeah. Um. Uh. Oh, keep your testosterone in a cool place that degrades in the heat. I didn't know that. Good to know. Did not know that. And yeah, nobody follows the laws in the States. Yeah, Dulce Vita apartments, they are quiet. Very quiet, very nice. I highly recommend it. The owners, I haven't lived there in two years. Every Christmas, they still invite me to the Christmas party. Every year we go over there. We're just there. We got friends that live there. We go over there all the time. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. I've been on for three hours. I think you guys have heard enough of me. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, thanks for all the comments and everything. I really appreciate it. Those of you that have shared your knowledge about things, so helpful. I really appreciate it. I learn something every time I do these. I learn from you guys. So I really appreciate it. Um, Honda monkeys around. Um, yeah, a lot of guys ride Hondas. Honda is a very good bike. I'd recommend a Honda. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you later. I got some really good interviews coming up in the next week or so. So stay safe, guys, and I hope to meet as many of you as possible when you come here. Bye.